One two one two. I go by the name of DJ What, and you're now listening to the original Jeek Podcast. Let's go. Ready to make an entrance? So backward cut. What up, Jeeks? My name is Rockin' Mr. Magic, and he is... Unique DNA. And this is the original Jeek Podcast. Unique DNA, my man, what's up? What is up, bro? What's going on? How's everything going? I feel like we talked about this earlier in the pre-show, but I feel like we haven't talked in, like, weeks. (laughs) Well, it's been... uh, See, today's Tuesday. Um, So it's been one week. One week. One week. But it feels like five. (laughs) (laughs) That's because we got so much going on, it feels like five. Yeah, yeah. Well, to make it feel even more cozy up in here, we have a wonderful guest with us on this episode. So to get it started, we want to welcome Max Moser of the Infinity Bros Podcast. Max, welcome. Dude, guys, thanks for having me on, man. It's so much fun to be here, and I don't think a podcast has hit more close to my heart than Jeek Nation podcast. This is the podcast to to be on. Jocks, make, gigs, let's go. Come on, come on. Thank this is our, oh, this is amazing. We got music and everything. I love it. I love it. I I, I, we, we I have no reason either. We're not worthy. Thank you for having me. Super grateful to be here. <laughs> well, look, look, look back. After four years, we, we better be good at something that we're doing here. Uh, <laughs> I know. I know. I mean, I, I'm sure we passed the 10,000 hour mark at this point. <laughs> Facts, like yeah, that. Like, come on, let, 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 let's that let expertise start rolling in now. Like <laughs> we love be it. we be getting at it. So, Jinx, to start this show, uh, we're going to do a short little Q&A with our friend here, Max. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to let Max tell you all how you can find him and his content on the interwebs. Yeah, you can follow me at MaxMoser73 or check us out on uh, the Infinity Bros podcast. Uh, uh, so, our Twitter page is like a disaster in regards to names. It's <laughs> underscore, it's it's the underscore infinity underscore bros. It's the worst because apparently there's like 50 <laughs> other people who have to have that name. So, if you just Google us, look for the, uh, the nice uh, thumbs up from the yellow Thanos gauntlet. You'll see nice. us. We're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Uh, you can check us our, our content out there. But uh, I, if you're looking to get more into the realm of football, which we might talk into, you can follow me as well. None of my friends know anything about football. I'm kidding. I love them. They know a lot about football. <laughs> but they'll be devastated to hear me say that on another podcast and throw them under the bus. So, yeah, that's where you can find me. Awesome. awesome. Well, Jeeks, if, uh, if your Google search fails because you find 15 other Infinity Bros, yes. we will provide a link in the description <laughs> directly to Max's Twitter and we the Infinity that. Bros Twitter. That way you don't have to we spend that covered. time. We got it covered. Don't do it. It's not worth it. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, let, let's start there. So let's start with, you know, with your jock side. Uh, you mentioned football. Tell us your football, your football love story. Dude, so football for me has been like a story of just being in the right place at the right time every single time. So it's gotta be nice. Long long story short with that's, this is fantastic. this is this is a weird story, okay? In my friends are eye rolling when they're listening to this, but for those that don't know me, my dad's in the army, uh still still in the army right now. So we moved every two to three years. So football wasn't really an option in regards to consistency. Mm. Um until I got to my junior year of high school, got to play on a really special team, ended up Basically starting my football career with two state championships right out the gate, playing with wow. some pretty impressive players, nice. guys that went on to, you know, some SEC schools and other that. So um, I was below average at best, uh, but happened to be in a very great situation, ended up getting some some opportunities to play at the next level, busted my knee, came up to Minnesota at a smaller school called Crown, which is where I met my friends that are on the Infinity Bros podcast. We actually played football together, all my friends, except for one of us, Jarrett. Um, but he went to school with us. And uh, so, again, same opportunities, just was lucky to be there. And uh, I actually get to coach now at the school I do my uh, youth ministry work with uh, through Young Life um, at Prior Lake High School, which is a 6A program here in Minnesota. 
mm. pretty prestigious. Uh, mm. Every week we're playing the best teams in the state. Um, and so I get to be part of those conversations. And I mean, these are very high level intellect coaches. And so I uh, get to be in the room for those conversations and uh, get to engage. I'm, I'm a ninth grade head coach, so I'm not, you know, making any decisions if anybody hates or loves varsity. <laughs> um, but uh, but I've just been blessed. I mean, that's just my story. So really passionate about it. Love it. Uh, super excited to chat football with you guys today. But um, yeah, football has just kind of been enmeshed in, in my story for the longest time. It's kind of been a consistency point as you hear the ups and downs and flows of my life. But um, yes. Yeah, super blessed, super lucky, and uh, right place, right time. That's my story. So that's awesome. about it. So when, I feel like your football story is like a pure flicks. Right? Yeah. I, yeah, I think I, I think we've seen. All right, hey, we're gonna write that down. We're gonna make sure we pitch that to pure yeah. flicks. Either pure flicks yeah. or either pure flicks or Hallmark, right? Like it's just perfect. It's got right, one of those stories right all over it. It can't work for Hallmark because he's not a pretty blonde or a redhead. That's fair. And, That's and fair. Christian. Yeah, I'm too yeah. Christian for it. It just won't work. It yeah, just that, that won't work. work. You're right. Yeah. I'm just. And it's I not have Christmas time. Radio. It is, it is yeah, on a yeah, Christmas yeah. story, so yeah, we, we, that, that can't happen. Because <laughs> pure flex is the way to go. Yeah, definitely right. pure flex. Right. <laughs> awesome. Um, so when you played, what position did you play? So I played right tackle um, pretty much the whole time. In college, I switched back and forth just because of depth purposes. Um, really like offensive line. Got to play a little defensive line, but I'd say my my spot is offensive line. I'm not as agile and athletic as some of the defensive linemen I've played with in my life. Uh, those guys are incredible. But I can be sturdy and put my foot in the ground and play patty cake. So there we go. That's about all I've got in regards to athleticism. So, yeah. Okay. That's about uh, all I can bring to the table. Like, uh, you sound like our, one of our friends, um, Big Country. He He's like that, too. He's like, I'm not athletic at all, but you can't move me either. Exactly. <laughs> so. It's perfect. Yes, Big Country. Perfect name. Perfect name. I would take that. If somebody said, we want to call you Big Country, I'd be like, where do we sign up? Yeah, I have that nickname. That sounds perfect. You don't mess with that guy. You never mess with Big I've never met Big Country, but you don't mess with Big Country. Nah. Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> no we, 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 were, uh, we were skilled position players. We were we were flashy pretty boy players. I was going to ask, what did you guys play then? That was, the, that was literally my next question. <laughs> so I played, um, I was a little bit all over the place. I played... Uh, uh, the end. Uh, that was in like freshman year when you know I was tall, okay. and faster than everybody, yep. but not necessarily didn't have to be big. Okay. Um, and then uh, switched to quarterback, and so I played quarterback and a little bit of a receiver. Oh my gosh, you were ever, you were everywhere. That's literally yeah. the gambit. That's every level. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, uh, well, I, I was the epitome of the Swiss Army knife. Um, so a little bit about my. A little bit more about my football background. I have a very high football pedigree. Okay. I've got, um, on both sides of my family. So um, to put it in context for you, I am preparing a podcast with my uncle John, who won a championship in the USFL and played several years in the NFL. Okay. That's on his. Um, that's on his side. My cousin Robbie went to had a full ride to Bowling Green. Wow. Like we've got fun. D one players pretty much except for me because I quit. Um, and then on my mom's side, we've got uh, – we only have a Hall of Famer. So wow. football – Only a Hall of Famer. Only a Hall of only. Famer. So football is in my pedigree, okay? Excuse um, me. <laughs> I played literally every position but Love it. quarterback. Okay. Um, so what was craziest was uh, in eighth grade, I was revolving from defensive end um, – Right guard, and when the starting tailback was out, then I was the backup tailback. Um, I was the slot receiver on certain packages. Oh my gosh! Um, and then on defense, I was like I said, um, I was on defense. I was D end or D tackle. They just switched me everywhere, um, but they would also pull me back into middle linebacker, and um, I could play safety because I was faster than all of them. And then I was also the number two kick returner. And I was the backup hunter. How does somebody go I from did, a right guard? I did go kick return, too. Okay. I forgot about that. How, how <laughs> does somebody go from right guard to halfback? Like, I, I'm I trying was, to process okay, well, that he, transition. He, 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 I mean, I, the honest answer, unfortunately, is I was live, I was the only black kid in a racist town, and they didn't want me to be the star. Roger that. Okay. Um, I was taller, stronger, faster than every okay. single player that was there. That makes um, a lot more sense. I, that makes a lot did, more they sense. They did not want me to be the star. <laughs> Uh, like they and like my teammates got mad because I worked harder than they yeah, did. yeah yeah 
and like our our, our early jog, I I would not let them beat me any in anything. Uh, so not in that yeah, position, was, you kind of you were kind of forced to do it that way, right? I mean, like I, yeah, I didn't have yeah. much I didn't have much of a choice, and Dude. they would not they would not let me play quarterback. Clearly, that's insane. Um, that's and they should have because there was nobody on any of those fields except for when we played some all black team from Virginia that could that had anywhere close to my speed because I was a multi sport athlete. I ran track, right. basketball, football, so I had more speed, and I knew how to run compared to most of them. And I, mm-hmm. and I was actually sometimes faster in pads, which is crazy. But <laughs> I, I, there were games I saved because of my speed. Right. They, we get we we would have lost if, on a flea flicker, except for I chased a dude down like Ben Watson. Right. Right. Know, right, right, right. On right. Chan Bailey style, like I DK chased Metcalf him this last weekend. Yeah. Did you see DK yeah, run yeah. that guy run Buda yeah, Baker exactly. down? That was insane, dude. It was crazy. That was, that was wild. So they, I, they, they put me everywhere, um, but in the positions to to get shine. Yeah, um, but then in high school, I pretty much rotated between safety, um, nickel corner, uh, and linebacker. A couple oh times gosh. I went to DN because I had the strength. But by that time, I wasn't the biggest um, and tallest anymore. Now I'm middle of the pack height wise. Yeah. But because of my skills and also elite coaching, because my dad coached me, my dad coached Fun. my uncle all the way to the NFL. So Sweet. I I knew a lot more of the game. So I was able to move around so cool. so easily, and they would hide me in packages because the other team didn't know what was going on because they didn't know what position I was really That's, playing. I, I was right, just going right. to say that. I was like, linebacker. game planning for you guys is a nightmare. Like <laughs> game planning yeah. for you is a nightmare personnel-wise. There's no, you don't know what they're going to come out in ever. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so man. so that, that actually was – my coach definitely used that to his advantage. He was always like – uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna run you on a you know receiver one this time. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> and then he's like, just run a fly because I was fast. I was actually um, yeah. He was a track star too. Year. Yeah, I was like uh, my junior year, I came out second in the state. Okay, um, for track, so I was fast. <laughs> and like 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 Matt said, like I I was faster than most people because I knew how to run because I ran track. So they would just like they were like, listen, just run out on the fly, and you know look back and the ball will be there <laughs> you know it was like perfect because they knew i could outrun pretty much any d back out there too easy um yeah so they would do that and then like you know halfway through the game they're like all right we're putting you in a qb okay we're gonna put you in a dn and people were like what are you doing <laughs> like you're all over the place but they would put me in you know they would use my speed yeah it was opportunities and, right i see it yeah okay. and they're like okay we're gonna put you in the Q- qb and i had a good arm too yeah i mean at the time i was i was probably throwing them out 40, I think it was like 40, 50 yards. Um, so I had a really strong arm, accurate. Like, I practiced it. Um, my dad used to teach me a lot. And so, yeah, I would, like, I would go in the QB, and they're like, wait, is it a trick play? Because, like, you know, they're like, <laughs> he was just running receiver. How do they know? You can't know. QB. It's not possible. <laughs> and, like, I go out there and, like, throw the ball, and they're like, oh, wait, he's the actual quarterback. <laughs> like, right. Yeah, so, it's it's yeah. it seems that's a philosophy for us at our school that we coach at. It's like, and it's at all levels. Is let's just put the best eleven on the field. And I don't know where that thought process was back in the day. Obviously, you're speaking to like you know the racism part of it, but like it doesn't make any sense to me as a coach. Why would you not want to win? Yeah, why would you not want to win? Put the best eleven out. Let's go. Let's have at it. Doesn't make any sense to me. It it it, it doesn't. Um, Blows you know, my, my mind. My my uncle has told me stories about when my father played. And um, the fact that he didn't get to shine on the next level because Jeez. his coach didn't like him, um, and they, my father would tell me stories about his football exploits. And I, you know, you take it, you know, your dad's talking about his glory days. You take it with a grain of salt. I didn't, and then they confirmed it. You know, I, uh, one quick story: he played a game, broke his arm in the second play of the game. He's playing free safety, mind you. Broke his arm, second play of the game. Finished the game, had twenty solo tackles. Jeez, with a broken arm. What an animal. Sheesh. And I'm like, how did you do that? And he's like, yeah. he's like, I was back there and I chanted kill the entire game. Oh my gosh. <laughs> do when not people, mess with when that people guy. People ask me why I don't mess with my father. That's why. <laughs> that's that why. man is crazy. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I. Uh, yeah, my. That's not my football story, and I will never claim that is my football story. Your dad can have that, and uh, Godspeed to him. Yeah, that's insane. Cat ain't that's built like that no more. No, <laughs> he's just built different. That's yeah. all that is. Yeah, that's, that's all that is. That's old school, hard nosed football. Seriously, right dude, guys are crazy. Jeez. Yeah, so like, so when it comes to like, yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know why he didn't get the chance to to play at the next level or even higher because 
you know, it's it's wild. But thankfully- play the best eleven. Play the yeah, best eleven. That, that's that, it. That, that's that the strategy. That should be. It's play the best eleven. Play the best eleven. Um, Roll from there. You know, and in, in yeah. and, and best eleven can be you know guys that don't have maximum talent but no. are coachable. They know what to do. They listen. Correct. They're they're precise. They make things happen. You know, because right. I I can't imagine any fullback being the best athlete out there really. But hey, you do your job. You work hard. You're listening. You're coachable. Totally. You're you're one of my top guys. Yeah, for sure, no doubt. Yeah. So definitely, you mentioned obviously uh, that you're that you're doing the coaching part on the youth level. Um, where does your football go as far as the professional level? Being that so, you're an army kid and you kind of travel yeah. around, did you ever get a loyalty? So the, the loyalty is of the Vikings, right? And and this is like this is oh this we, is, we have to shut this. Wait, wait, yeah, yeah, shut. All right, all right let's go. have a good one. See you guys later. All right. No, if it's any consolation, uh, uh. being a Vikings fan uh, does that. We do that to ourselves now. We're at the point now where we're doing that kind of response to ourselves. We're like, what are you doing? Why? Why do you like them so much? Um, I would ass- so so out east. What are you guys fans of? Are we talking Giants fans, Pittsburgh fans, Philly fans? What are we talking here? We're Lions. We're both fans. Lions fans. Fan- oh, Jiminy Christmas! Well, never yeah. mind then. I feel like I'm just then. I feel above you now. I'm back to being above. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> at least not, at least not this season now. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, before I was like, oh man, there's some history over there with those teams, and I'm like, no, with the Lions, no, there's not. We're good. No, um, our, our, our our history. Hey, our history. No, no, our history. It's Barry Sanders. Right. It's Barry Sanders. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 our, our, our our history is Billy, is Billy Sims. Can't forget about the first. Yep. 20. Okay. Got it. Billy it. Sims, Barry Sanders, Megatron. That's it. And I As don't count be. Stafford because you guys can't even um, you can't even finish a Mount Rushmore if you wanted to. Matthew Stafford no, would no. be your fourth. I mean, it would it would Stafford no, would be the fourth. But not, no. no, that dude des- deserves so much better. <laughs> to, to, to do we don't discuss number nine. <laughs> All right, fair to, enough. To sorry. do a wow to, for us to do a. a of Mount Rushmore, we'd have to go pre Super Bowl era. For we'd sure, we'd have to go all the way back to Doak Walker in the nineteen fifty something oh NFL gosh. championship yeah, that we're the Lions deep. won. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, we're we're yeah we're in. As shape. long as Megatron and Barry Sanders are there, it, you probably can't go wrong after that. It really doesn't matter who you pick after that. That's a fair. That, that's, that's, that's a, a fair point, assessment, but it's still sad. But it's sad. Yeah, <laughs> it, it really it really is sad. But we've Did got you, more wins this year than y'all do. Oh yeah, so. we're garbage this year. We're hot garbage. We 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 need to blow it all up. It's all got to go. I I've been on the fire Mike Zimmer bandwagon for two years. Oh, uh, like, we've been on the fire da- uh, Mike Matt Patricia. You, you guys should have kept Caldwell. Got hired. You should have kept Caldwell. Kept you should have kept Caldwell. I said we should have kept Caldwell. Yeah, I've been saying that. Caldwell knew yes. what he was doing. Caldwell knew what he was doing. Yeah. Patricia Patricia's a nut job. Hey, well, if it keeps getting worse in New England, maybe we'll keep Quinn and have Quinn bring in. Hoodie because that person from New England I'll take, all the other ones I'm not interested in, but that one I'll take. You wouldn't take the enemy right now from Kansas City, because I no, feel I'm like from New England. Oh, I'm sorry, I was just speaking like head coach. Because, because head coach see, if you look at general. the Lions, the Lions front office and roster, it's full of full former New England people, except yeah. for the one that yeah. counts the most. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I, mean, I don't understand. Have we have we heard anything from Jamie Collins this year? No, it's like he don't even <laughs> exist. Uh, is, is that Mendola yeah. caught a pass? Dude, you guys, I, I think the Lions are better than New England right now, at least. I would say that. I, I would take. I would take the Lions right know. now. That's that's, that's a tough. A tough one. One. I would take. I, mean, I would take the Lions simply because I think Stafford's better than Cam Newton. In my opinion, I would take Stafford or Newton. Hmm. I don't know where you guys are. You guys are speaking pretty crazy thoughts about Stafford. Stafford's a baller. I just got to make sure I come <laughs> look, and defend look, him look, on this look. show. I, Stafford was a baller. Dude, what are you talking about? He's awesome. What? He's awesome. <laughs> he just threw that game-winning touchdown last week. What are you guys talking about? But but see, but that's <laughs> but that was the that was that was against virtually nobody. I mean, okay. That was First of all, that virtually me. nobody team beat my team. Okay, so we need to calm that's down true. with that. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Okay, um, they curb on my team. They walked into our house. And they beat us up. Okay. <laughs> that is true. Hey, we barely made. it. I know we you guys barely, barely made it out. Game. It took the last play to do it. Oh, man. I like here's Stafford. The thing about I'm shocked you guys don't like Stafford. I'm no, it's not that. that we don't like. I'm not a Stafford hater. I just feel like we can do better. Um, and we're not going anywhere with him. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, like I mean, we don't. This point. we don't dislike Stafford. We we <laughs> like right. Stafford. We just know that he's not going to get us over the hump. Fair. That's and we fair. We know, and we know that 
for the Lions, if they would have been smart, they'd have traded him two, three seasons ago and gotten value for him. Because now he's 31, right. 32 now years old. Him. He's coming off a major back surgery, and he has no more trade value. Now, two right. years ago, they should have sent him to Jacksonville when Jacksonville had an elite defense and needed a quarterback to get them to the Super Bowl. Wow. Should have traded him then. Well, we could have gotten some picks for him. We could have gotten some value for him. But now he's re- he doesn't who, – who, no one's going to give a first. No one's going to give a fourth rounder for Stafford right now. Yeah, I don't even plus- think – I don't even think through the lens of a Lions fan. Like, I can't even imagine what you guys have gone through your whole oh, life. Like, it's your whole life. <laughs> Like, it's not like this last, like for us, it's like, okay, this year is just hard, but we've had a couple good years the last couple of years. Yeah. You guys haven't had any of that. Yeah. No. We, we, well, what was it, five years ago that we got screwed against Dallas? Yeah. That one and the one against the Packers. Oh, yeah. You guys always seem to go into I mean, the Dallas game was a playoff game. game. But that would have gotten, that would have gotten us into the playoffs. Yeah. Right. We, we needed that game. That was our wild card. Yeah. So yeah, but um, it's I hope you guys yeah, make the playoffs like, this year. I hope you guys do it. The way the season's going in in general, I think we will. You're better than Chicago. I think you are. Yeah, I think you're better than Chicago. We never, but they the already beat us. We never get out of the first round. Anyway. They That's made true. Trubisky look like he was Aaron Rodgers. Right. Yeah. They did, they did. but but I I still think <laughs> I still think you're better in terms of. You just need to you need to get rid of Patricia. That's the first step. You ain't lying. And every I, time that's that's a real deal. Get rid of him, him and Zimmer. We got to get rid of Zimmer. Zimmer needed to be gone last year. I don't care that we won, won our playoff game. <laughs> Zimmer's so bad. Zimmer's let me so ask bad. You, let me ask you this as a Viking fan. How weird is it to see Adrian Peterson in a Lions jersey? So that doesn't bother us. Um, really? When, when he had that whole switch incident that mm-hmm. happened, I think, in 2016, mm-hmm. if I'm correct, Something like that, that kind yeah. of really dropped him down a couple pegs. Um mm-hmm. So I've got a buddy who who really kind of knows him well. Um, he owns the buddy I have owns uh, original pancake house in Eden Prairie, which is where Adrian Peterson was always going to on Tuesdays. He would wow. like bring his players and hang out there. And he just said that kind of was like the moment of like Adrian Peterson was done with Minnesota. Mm. Like, and for whatever reason in his head, he felt like the Vikings were not handling that well, which I was like, I don't know how they're not handling this well. Hey, like, yeah, you whooped a three-year-old with a they, switch. Yeah, That's yeah. A, I mean, that, right. you did that, bro. I'm not, not, not here to argue the philosophy of what he did. I'm, I'm more so saying, like, it came out, you did it, own it, and move on. Like, yeah. And I think, I so I think him going to Detroit and, and spending time with Washington, it was like, whatever to us. We love Dalvin Cook. Mm-hmm. We love Dalvin Cook here, and so like I, I for whatever reason, it's fine. I, he's a Viking long term. Everybody knows it. I mean, he'll he'll retire a Viking. He'll go into the hall as a Viking. He'll go into the hall as a Viking. I mean, that two hundred ninety six yard rushing game against the Chargers. That's 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 a hall of that's the that's the game that they show, right? I mean, yeah. so he's he's good. I I don't really care. I mean, you guys got Everson Griffin today too. Like he just got traded to the Lions. Yeah, today. for a six round draft. draft right. Pick. So like, I mean, it just seems like that's kind of the place for Vikings to go <clears> die. <throat> A little bit. Yeah. That's kind of how I look at it. I mean, I mean, he, wow. he's not All right, wrong. bye, Everson. This is it. This is the last shot. Stop <laughs> it's, here. It's, it's where, I mean, it's where, we, pa- it's where I mean, Patriots and Vikings go to die. Apparently, serious. It's where Patriots everyone too. goes to die. Yeah. <laughs> remember when we got uh oh who was it? Oh, remember, remember when we when um, we got um uh from the Vikings um uh, is, is, is I can see his face Dante Culpepper when Culpepper oh, yeah. was yeah. was there. Oh, I um, loved Culpepper. I loved Dante Culpepper. Yeah, I was like, oh, look, we got Dante Culpepper post Miami. This is going to be fun. Yeah. Um, right. Everyone goes to die. Jeff Garcia died there. Oh, um, gosh, yeah. Kitna. Um, John Kitna after his Cincinnati days. Kitna. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, what's his name? Um, can't think of his name now. I don't know why I keep thinking Isaac Bruce, but it wasn't Isaac Bruce. You guys, you guys um, also had uh, the <laughs> you had the guy that's on ESPN now, the wake up guy, Dan Orlovsky. Oh God! Don't mention that name. <laughs> don't say that name to me. Orlowski. Oh my God! I can't running out the back of the end zone with Jared Allen pointing at him, laughing. <laughs> I cannot stand Orvlov. Orvlovsky has the nerve yeah. to be paid on ESPN to talk about a game he could barely play for what? sure. No like, bro, when he be talking about people, I'm like, dude, did you see your career? You I know. have like five total touchdowns in your 15 year career as a backup. Like, what are you talking about? Right. Yeah. Like, I, what I, big moments did you play in, bro? Like, it is funny to hear him critique. It is very funny to he hear is, him critique. Is he is. I, I, will his, list, I, I, can, I will yeah. list. I will listen to guys who weren't that great. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, but know the game. I'll listen to uh, Kirk Curb Street on college. He was great in college. That's where he should be talking. I'll listen to um, the one that won the title with the Ravens. I can't remember his name. Oh, uh, Trent Dilfer. Trent Dilfer. I'll listen to Trent Dilfer because he does know the game. He knows his position. And the guy actually won. He wasn't a great quarterback, but I'll listen to him. Um, and he had, he had times that he was successful. I will listen to a Jeff George. I'll listen to a. I'll even listen to a Jeff Blake. Tony Romo is great too. Tony Romo, yeah, he 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 yeah. choked all the time, but he knows what he's, he's talking about. He's on another about. level. With he his probably announcing. should be coaching. Like Tony yeah, Romo, agreed. I'll I'll listen to Tony Romo. I will not give any credence to a word Dan Orlovsky said. <laughs> <laughs> that was literally you answered my question. I was like, "Is Lions like, fans do we like that Orlovsky is famous now, no, or do we, we hate it? We, we hate can't it." Okay, stand go. It. Uh, no, no. Okay, I, definitely. Not. We have so many of the backup quarterbacks <laughs> I'd rather listen to. I'm like, no, yes. Yeah. Drew Stanton. Where's and Drew he's a little Stanton arrogant doing? with it too, right? Like he's just a little. He's a little yeah, like yeah, he, he oh. thinks he's right, and you're like, that's a little <laughs> weird that you're saying it that way. Like, does he know we're all laughing at him right now? It's like you're not Stephen A. Smith. You're not Skip Bayless. You're Dan Orlovsky. You're Dan Orlovsky. <laughs> oh, oh my man. God. Okay, I, I can't. I can't. I can't. Because we'll go down. I'm sorry. Road. I took you down. No, the, no, I took you, us down the Dan Orlovsky true. path. I apologize. It, it's not your fault. <laughs> um, it's, this is what happens when we talk about the Lions. Then because we get all passionate, and we're like, yeah, we want to Hulk out. It's and crazy. and yeah. I will say the Vikings fans, we do not look down on Lions fans. Like we we like we watch the Lions and we're like that sucks. That sucks. We really hate the Bears and the Packers. We 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 we're cool with you guys. You guys rock. That's because we're not a threat. No. Yeah, but yeah. but like, yeah. you if you meet a Lions fan, that's a that's a fan. Yes, there there are no bandwagon Lion fans. No, no, no. When you guys get good eventually, and somebody <laughs> says I've always been one, they're lying to you probably. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. Well, Own the people, moment when you get good. <laughs> it, it, it's I like it's like all those seat. Golden State Warrior fans that cropped out oh, of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like now you yeah, ain't yeah. no Warriors. As fan. as a I'm I'm a Laker fan as well, an LA Laker fan. I and I know we're going to talk about this later a little bit, but like my buddy Robbie, who's on the Infinity Bros podcast, him and I had to endure six years of our friends just like coming after us, uh. <laughs> and we were like, "There's going to come a moment where we're good, we're the Lakers, and here it is." Right. Yeah. Had to keep those yeah. receipts. You got you got to keep the receipts. Uh, keep however, the receipts. I'm, I, I'm scared that uh, we'll be long gone before any receipts could be cashed in for the Lions. Like yeah. we'll be those we'll be those fans like uh, yeah. like those Boston fans or those Cub fans that that you know mm-hmm. lived to be 85 and never saw their team win yeah, the championship. Yeah. Like <laughs> we had we just had a, we just had a really famous Minnesota sports writer named Sid Hartman died at 100 years old. Never saw a single Vikings win the Super Bowl. Wow. wow! That was like what his son wrote in the story of of his dad. <laughs> that you see, that's I, I, as a, as a Michigan that's native. Sad. See, we'll see. See, you need to the Jersey guy, so um, he doesn't go to all Detroit sports like I do. But oh I'm gosh. blessed. I'm blessed in that I got to see my Pistons win three championships. Good for you. I got to see my Tigers win the World Series, and I got to see my Red Wings win a bunch of championships. So if the Lions don't win one in my lifetime. I really can't complain because I saw everything else. I can. You can, because you, because you're an Orlando Magic fan for some reason. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh, 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 you told me oh. why, but I, it still don't make sense to me. You're a you're a fan of you're you're a fan of pain. I see. My gosh. Well, so it started. Okay, it started way back with like Shaq and Penny. Okay. Um, and then, and then it moved on mm-hmm. to T Mac. He's my favorite player of all time. T Mac is amazing. Um, yeah, and then like he left, and then it was like we kept getting good players, but couldn't win any games. So like you get him had, too early. You know, we had Dwight Howard. Yeah, we had Dwight Howard. We had all these different people. He went to the um, finals. Is Dwight gonna retire a Laker now that he won a title, or is he gonna retire a, a Magic? You think? Uh, I'm he'll go. No, he'll the, go into the hall as a Laker. I mean, I'm sorry, as a as a, ma- a member of the Magic. Because I, know, all I was going to say, I was like, which one is Orlando. it now? Because he's like, I mean, he's, yeah. he's spent enough years yeah. with the Lakers, he could make the argument. No, he could. No. He has. He spent like you know, five years. No, he spent what two, two, three he total seasons because he came back. He came back. Yeah, he, he, went, he, he went there, then he left, and he came back. Yeah, but he did. He wasn't even an All Star. When he was in the LA the first no, time. No, but if he won all the title, is what I'm saying. would he would he claim it as as a championship contender? Is my question. 
Sí, no, no, but he he was a Orlando Hall of Famer before so then, though. He, he he demands a three-time Defensive Player of the Year, multiple-time All NBA, multiple-time All Star. He was going into the Hall when he was still in Charlotte or in, in Atlanta. True. Like he was going to be in the Hall of Fame because he has the resume. The championship, this championship for him, because he didn't do anything. This is a Mitch Richmond, Gary Payton, you know, guys who won a title at the end of their career that yeah. you forgot won a title. Yeah, he went. He was there for two years. I don't know where I got five from. I thought he yeah. was there long. I thought he was yeah, at. Cause I, I thought he was with LA for like two or three years for that stint, but he was only there in 2012. Yeah, it was a failed experiment. Yeah, because yeah, Steve Nash. Well, I, I I'm not even a Laker fan. When they signed Nash, I'm like, what are you doing? Okay. Doing, I, yeah. I mean, the guy couldn't play defense when he was 20. The guy's not going to be able to play yeah. defense with one leg at 36. And an old, decrepit Kobe. All right, I got to ask you this then, Detroit fan. Okay, so yes. like with all the MJ things coming out, I'm, I'm, we're going off tangent. You guys just try That's okay. Re- reel me in, reel me in here. No, okay. we're good. Go ahead. So with the, with the like, <laughs> we're good. With all this MJ stuff that's been going on the last year with COVID, like the documentary, which was amazing, one of the best yes. documentaries ever, and the Isaiah ever. Thomas stuff comes up. Mm-hmm. What is your reaction to this? Was he like, is the disrespect like insane from somebody who lived in that era? Compared to Michael Jordan, oh, we're going down a rabbit that, hole. This is like an honest question I have. I oh, need to hear man. from like an honest Detroit Pistons you, fan. You, you're, you're lucky. Who's not going to sugarcoat it for me? All the way down okay, a rabbit so, hole. Okay, um, so strap in, folks. Because <laughs> you were there. You were there. I was, like, you, you, I, I was you there. Saw it. You watched. It. I, I, I was there. Okay, so let, let me put my Pistons fandom into perspective for you. Okay, um, I have the Wheaties box. I have the T-shirt. I have multiple books on the bad boys um i still have posters that are not hanging but they're in boxes in my storage like i i am a piston i'm a bad boy fan for life um i met adrian danley and when i the only thing i asked him was are you still mad at isaiah for getting you traded like that is Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. You did not you asked him that i did i was that takes okay, some guts I, man i'm gonna tell you well, what that takes some guts i was at um question. i don't know do you ever have you ever heard of dematha high school and no. uh, okay, so Dematha is a high school in um, in the D.C. area. Coach Morgan Wooten is one of the basketball high school basketball coaches, greatest one of the greatest ones. Like okay. people talk about him, Coach Hurley, like those right. are great all time high school coaches. Okay, Dematha, Joe Forte, like tons of great players went to Dematha. Okay, huge school. Okay, so they have a camp. I'm at this camp. This camp had, and I went there two weeks in a row at this camp. I met not just AD, like Danny Ferry was there. I met all these people, like NBA players come through and talk. So Adrian's coming, he's giving this talk to this group of us. And as he's talking about it, talking about different things, they asked, does anyone have a question? Nobody had a question. And I'm probably the only Detroit cat there. So I'm just like, I got a question. <laughs> and you're like, he's like, okay, go ahead. I'm like, are you still mad at Isaiah for getting you traded off the Pistons? What did he and say? He cracked up. He I believe claps it. his hands together. He goes, everywhere I go, someone asks me that question. And I'm like, I'm a Pistons fan. I got, I got to know. Are you still? And here's, and the reason why I asked that question is because I have this book by Cameron South. It's called The Franchise. If you ever read it, it's a great in-depth look at that 1989 team. Okay. Um, at the end of one of the chapters, it was talking about the trade for from of Danley for Aguirre, and during the first game where the Pistons played the Mavericks, um, the book states that Isaiah and AD embraced each other um, before the game, and that AD whispered in Isaiah's ear, "I'll never forgive you for getting me traded." So, the book says it. I'm taking the book verbatim, so I had to ask the question. <laughs> so but my Piston fandom uh, wow. is hardcore. I um, There's a group I'm in. Shout out to my friends, especially Carl Colangelis of the Sports Hit List. He's had me on multiple times, it's particularly to talk about the Bad Boys episode of The Last Dance. Um, so Isaiah Thomas is my dude, okay? Right. Zeke is my man. Brought us two chips. Like, that's my guy. The hate, the animosity, it, it's real. It's like there is not real beef in the league anymore. That beef I agree. is real and is never going to die. No. Like there, these, it's it's the <laughs> reason I think the reason that they get criticized so much for teaming up is because of this era. 
Yes, because this era because defined guys, that expectation moving yeah, forward. You, you you didn't play you if you played together with someone you were formerly like a rival with, it's because you got traded. It's because you had no choice. You didn't say, Hmm, I can't beat these guys or I don't like these guys. Let me play with them and and, and get over the hump. No, you did what you could to destroy them. And it, it was a different. It was a different era. It. it was a. It was a different mindset. Like, and I try to explain that when people talk about the, you know, this this goat debate and this and that, what the mindset was of players playing during what I consider the golden age of basketball in the eighties. You had great talent, and you had guys with drive because the money was not what it, it clearly no. we're close to what it is today. So these guys. All these guys, black, white, didn't matter. All these guys are coming from situations where this money is life changing for them, their families, right, and their in their future generations, their grandkids. Yeah, this is going to change their lives forever if yeah. they manage their money right. So, you had guys like Bill Lambeer. It was a joke that he was the only one in the league who's who made less money than his dad did because he was he was a rich kid. Mm -hmm. um, so like everybody's their lives are changed dramatically by what they have in the league. And when Isaiah magic bird, Mike, when they were the top, pretty much the top five players in the league, they were, they were the only ones getting like a million dollars a year. No one else was making that right. type of money. So when you get to that point and you're driving, you're pushing for that, that makes your life that different. That's getting you out of, you know, for, and for Isaiah's, you know, you know, South side Chicago, it's getting you out of the Chicago slums. Um, in, in the in getting out the hood, you, your family, who's been his family, which have been embroiled in gangs, um, the vice lords out there had half of his brothers in there. And there's a movie I don't know if you know. There's a movie about his mom, Mary Thomas, about what about the fact that the vice lords came to her house to try to get some of her sons and give him the gang. And Mary Thomas came out the door with a shotgun, like you better get off my porch. Yeah, Mary Thomas wasn't no joke. Don't mess yeah. With her. yeah, so like that's the environment these guys are. A lot of these guys are right. coming from. It is life or death. And when they get on that court and you're making that type of money because you can play a game, it's it's a completely different. It's not just a game for these guys. Right. So Mike had that type of mentality. Magic oh, had yeah. that type of mentality. Bird had that. French Lick is the smallest hick town, poor town out there. That dude is a killer. So you have all these killers out there virtually killing each other and when you have a situation where zeke had what mike wanted mike was tired of losing to them uh yeah and he was getting beat up by them yep the jordan rules were he was jordan done rules with the jordan were a thing rules. and you know and and anyone and you know anyone that's read the art of war you know you got to cut the head off the snake zeke's the head of the snake so it got personal you know, Mike said things on the paper in the newspaper. You know, he, you know, the whole freeze out thing. Mike said the freeze out didn't happen. And I think the freeze out was one of those things that Mike conjured up in his head to give himself drive because we know Mike makes things up in his head and has his own reality. I think we all learned that in the documentary. Yes. So if you didn't know, Mike makes <laughs> that's Mike. Mm -hmm. So and I think I think the whole freeze out um, happened because like if you look at the numbers, I think Jordan had like one or two touches less than everybody else. Like that man wasn't frozen out the game. Um, <laughs> the numbers don't lie. Um, so so, I was like, okay, okay, I got so so there's so there's that that beef is legit and the green team beef. You know, that's what I was gonna ask. Should he have been on the dream team? Absolutely. Okay. All okay, right. The, the dream because there's team, some people that say he shouldn't have because of how they did. That's why I'm asking. That's those people asking. are those people are insane. That's fine. I'm just and, asking. And anyone that says John Stockton or Chris Mullen should have been on the dream team that's over true. Chris Isaiah Mullen was Lord not Thomas III yeah, I agree with them. Yeah. is I even Drexler. Drexler wasn't better than Zeke then. I mean, maybe at the ninety two. No, ninety two. He wasn't. He was never better than Zeke. That was just um, a name. And he was never that type of level of, of caliber player. Like, and I like Clyde. I love Clyde. But Patrick Ewing, love him. Not better than Zeke. Um, David Robinson, and this was he was only three years into the league. Like, bro, you're not better than them. You're not better than a guy who's won two titles. You know, <laughs> multiple time all. Like, you're not. This dude is a, And here's another thing. When they did the top 50 players in 1996, one guy out there who was standing alone, did not have a teammate with him. And that's Isaiah Lord Thomas III. 
every other top 50 player had a teammate also wearing one of those jackets. So you must just hate Michael Jordan then. <laughs> like you must I, be in a I, I very have, small minority of people who cannot stand the love that Michael Jordan. Has. I have a I have a profound respect for Michael Jordan. For sure, I, I love his. Everybody game. I has a him. profound respect. Not well, not a lot of these young kids don't. <laughs> I I I love That's watching fair. my That's play. I love watching my play. Even some of the older ones, though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't hate him, but I don't act like I'm a fan either because I'm a, I'm a bad boys fan. Like that, he's still the enemy. To Do you this get mad? Day. Do you get mad when when people say LeBron's better? I get mad if or do, people or say do you LeBron's. Take it personally? I, I get mad if people say LeBron's better for dumb reasons. Like if you want to say LeBron's <laughs> better for a reason that makes sense, okay. But, but what but quantifies when, as a reason that makes sense? Like ten straight finals, or like what is it? What's the what's well, see, the number like, for you? That's see, like see that 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 is. I mean, that's a reason because it's impressive. Right. You know, generally that's a team thing. That's not a hey, this guy left and went to this other team, and they you know made the finals. Like that's impressive. That's a heck of a streak. Now, obviously, he lost more than he won, but that's a heck of a streak. You know, that's impressive. Um, obviously, his t- his cumulative stats are impressive. The, the points, assists, rebounds, yeah. extremely impressive. Um, for me, when you're talking about goats, is when you really have to start nitpicking. Um, differences to me mike is on top and only reason why mike is on top over kareem who's my number two is because mike peaked in the nba mike was a good high school player got great because he grew he was a very good college player got a little better got to the nba and then he peaked and when he reached the mountaintop nobody else got in right that's a good point dominated the mountaintop yeah, whereas um, guys like, you know. Went and played baseball for two years. Yeah. Came back and was like, okay, this is mine's again. That's and insane. and people were That's like, well, what, what about, you know, 95 then when they lost to Orlando? I'm like, I don't pretend like that didn't happen. But I'm also not going to act like that was a full NBA season. That was a completely, the only teammate on that 95 team that he had before was Scottie Pippen. Everybody else was different. Had not played with them. He played 17 regular season games. So that does not carry the same weight to me. The man, when a man had a full season, the man won six straight in a full season. Like that's, and how, and not only three peat, which is very hard. Very few teams have done it, but you three peated twice. Yeah. And if, I, I, and, and if Reinsdorf and and and, and uh, Kraus weren't idiots, they probably would have four peated in that '99 lockout season too, because they wouldn't have been as tired and they would only play fifty some games before the playoffs. And I don't see anybody beating them in 99 if Mike and Scotty and Rodman are still there. But that's a what if. There's no, but so that, that you can't top that. Kareem, the, the six MVPs. The six Makes titles. complete sense, yeah. You know, the most unstoppable move probably in all sports. Like no one can stop the skyhook. Kareem dominated. Yeah. You know, and, and Kareem has the best basketball career, period. One lost what two games total in high school, lost like two games total in college, and dominated for tw- nineteen seasons in the NBA. Thirty five yeah. years old, winning finals, you know, winning finals MVPs, you know, winning NBA championships in his, you know, his elderly years. Like, come on, Bron- and I said it last week, and, <laughs> and David was like, "Oh, go get some hate for that," because I said Bron ain't better than Cap. Yeah. And and I I know disrespect to Braun, but he's not better than Kareem. He's he's, he's not. I'll argue, I can I'll take that he's better than Bird. I'll I'll put him above Bird now. He got that fourth ring. I will put him above Bird. Bird. Hold on, he wasn't above Bird before. What was going no. on? Shut he wasn't up. above. First of all, Bird Come won three on. straight. He won. Bird We're won retreading th- last episode. Sorry. He won three straight MVPs. <laughs> Larry Bird did. He also won three titles in the toughest era of basketball. Oh, my God. For, fi- for, a, for a white dude who could not jump and was slow, <laughs> that man <laughs> averaged 26 a game. And here's another thing, and, and, and not, this is not a knock LeBron. This is just fact. LeBron, and this is why, to me, why LeBron has not won more. And in my opinion, the physical specimen LeBron is, he should be the GOAT. And I think that's what – some people that's fair. get irritated about because of that physical specimen he is. 
mixed he if you me. mixed with skill and and the fact that LeBron is in year seventeen, he still only has one post move is insane. So if you had if he took the drive to the commit to the fundamentals that Mike did, plus that athleticism, he should be far above everybody else. But that unfortunately is not what happened. You had someone like Bird who got his, but LeBron is always the system. And that's part of the reason why he isn't one more. When you're the system, you limit everybody else. Mike played within the system. When Mike was the system, they got into the playoffs. They went deep. They lost. When Mike, Mike also became, had better coaching, though. Hey, hey, see, you're probably too young to remember this. Phil Jackson was nobody. Oh, for sure. The documentary was, makes that very clear. He was absolutely – but most people didn't know that before the documentary. Yeah, but, but, Phil Jackson but he proved was, that he was somebody after that with the Lakers is what I'm saying. He honestly, I'm going. I'm going to be. People are going to probably hit on this. Phil Jackson's a great <laughs> coach. He's, but as a coach, his greatness is not in coaching basketball. His greatness is in managing ego and personality. Yeah, that's fair. Because that's fair. X's and O's wise, that's what Tex Winter was there for. Yeah, but the triangle he, is still a pretty strong offense, right? But I that mean, was like, not his. That was Tex Winter's offense. For sure, but he was still implementing it and coaching it and developing it within the system of his players. No, he had Tex do that. <laughs> okay. I mean, I so, mean, you, so you, he you can't have any credit. I, mean, I, mean, I don't he's know if you've read it. Phil's okay, book. Right. I don't know all if right. you've read Phil's book, but Phil himself is like, this is Texas thing. I believed in it, and I got them to right. run it I'm, because I'm he believed not, in it. I guess but, the argument I'm not making is that Phil – was like the ex the creator of that play. I think the the point I'm trying to say is that's part of the coaching emphasis. And I think the management of personalities is more critical than the X's and O's, especially especially for who he had to deal with. Well, and I think moving forward yeah. in the NBA, that's going to be more more paramount Def- than any other Def- factor. I mean, the thing is, like Mike helped Mike made Phil into the guru he he became, and then he proved that he could sustain it in L.A. Right. Well, even like but, with, even like today, like you look at Spolstra, like Eric Spolstra just totally led those guys with Jimmy Butler and then well, a bunch of like rookies Spolstra's and young guys. A good coach. Spolstra knows what he's doing, but he but manages thing, personalities too because he had Jimmy Butler. But you got a gotta, nightmare. Oh no, no, Jimmy. But see, they say that, but Jimmy Butler was not a nightmare in <laughs> Chicago. He was a nightmare in Minnesota, man. They no, hate Minnesota, him up here. They no, hate him. No, you know why they hate him? Because they had a team of full of soft guys with no heart. Oh, I believe you. I'm not a I'm not a I'm not a Wills Wiggins. fan. They what Cat. they hate is that he called him out and then he picked the third team up in practice and then whooped up on him. Yes. And then walked out and said, Trade me. Because yeah, Jimmy's a baller. I love Jimmy. Yeah, like, yeah Jimmy Jimmy's awesome. Yeah. If I could get Jimmy in Detroit, I trade Blake Griffin. Trade I don't trade the whole squad. Oh, that's Give right. Me you guys have Jimmy Blake Griffin. Ugh. Buckets, man. I, that's Ugh. dude. <laughs> but um but so coaching, yes, Mike has an advantage. But people like to gloss over the fact that Braun went to Miami. And no, no, Spolster Pat was Riley, good, man. Spolster's no, good. Spolster's good. But Pat Riley may not have been the coach, but let's not act like Pat Riley didn't coach LeBron in certain ways. I, he may I not still have hold that it's more Spolstra. I still hold no, to that. He tried to get Spolster fired. Who do you think corralled him from trying to get Spolster fired? I st- I still would Pat st- Ry- he tried to get Spolster fired because he was younger in his career. Spolster now is proving he, uh, he's elite. He is. I, th- I don't think people consider Spolster elite until this run, because all all I, people I a lot of people say that LeBron. Well, he had LeBron, D Wade, and Bosh. They're like, okay, you have that. You should make it to the finals. Like they, they, I know Heat fans. Yeah, I think a lot of people did. Heat fans say who, if you can't, yeah. if you can't make the finals with those guys, then you're trash and you're not that good. He proved this season that he is that good of a coach. Mm-hmm. But and also Riley, again, he wasn't on the bench, but, but he he's had a influencing. Whole, yes. He had a whole lot to do with LeBron winning them titles and influencing and teaching him how to have a winning culture. Mike created the winning culture day one when he got to Chicago. Yeah, because that fair. team was still trying to tank. They were not trying to win, and Mike was like, "Yo, I'm here to win. If y'all ain't here to win, then I'm <laughs> you in the wrong place." <laughs> expletive, like, expletive, expletive. Right? Yeah, exa- right. exactly. Words we don't say <laughs> on the show. The but like, so like, but I, I, I like, but yes, Bron. 
He was not better than Bird to me. And I, again, no, my point was LeBron makes himself the system. Larry Bird, Michael Jordan, Isaiah Thomas, Magic Johnson played within the system and that allowed them to maximize not only themselves and put up Hall of Fame numbers, but others. When you play yeah. with when D. Wade, Kyrie, Bosch, Love, all of them, their numbers go down. They 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 don't they don't put up Hall of Fame numbers when they yeah, play. He doesn't with elevate them, right? He doesn't elevate them. He elevates role players. They look better, but other stars do not. Kevin McHale, Robert Parrish, Hall of Fame guys who got Hall of Fame numbers while Bird was getting his Hall of Fame numbers. Same with same with Scotty. I, I agree same, with that. You know, same with Magic. Magic made look. I love James Worthy, but Magic made James Worthy the Hall of Famer that he is. Because James yeah. wasn't going to be that Hall of Famer if he doesn't have Magic feeding him the way he does. Like you, when you can put up those numbers and you have other stars that still look like stars, that puts you in that upper upper echelon. So that's why I had Bird over over Braun. That fourth championship and the way he's done it. You know, obviously the numbers and all that. Now I have him above Bird, but he ain't, he ain't going to go above, above Kareem and he ain't going to go above Mike. Now, I will say this before we I end this tangent. I was – because I, I enjoy these debates. Um, I, wanted, I was hoping LeBron would have made a real strong case for GOAT in Miami because I believe that all four years they had the best team. If they would have four-peated – then you have a extremely strong case for LeBron to argue as goat because he would have done something that nobody um, since the in the modern you know post eighties post post merger had done is four peat Mike and that was one of the big things when Mike three peated he was like look I'm not saying I'm better than Isaiah I'm not saying I'm better than Bird I'm not saying I'm better than Magic but I have done this that they could not do none of those guys three peated Matt Bird never won back to back. The Pistons repeated, the Lakers repeated, but no one, no, people weren't, they weren't, they weren't three-peating. Three-peating became a A decade thing. of finals appearances is a heck of a feat, and I, a, I think people are going to have to own that eventually. No, they, and they do, but however, when you get there, you've got to win. And when Agreed. You, when you lose, and when- Nobody cares about second and when you, and, and not agree. even that, is, and when, you get, that. when you've been swept multiple times- I agree. And you're supposed to be that. So like I'm just saying that argument is, in my opinion, very fair. And I fair. think it speaks to the longevity of his career. Ab- absolutely. Um but my and my other thing with that, unfortunately, is he has he does play in a watered down league because of continued expansion. But, yeah, we'll see. But, I but, mean, but, but you, if the can't, Warriors help, but you can, can't help if the, the era that you play in either. Like he, no. you can only play the competition you play in. The yeah. Warriors are pretty yeah. good. There's some elite players here, but it's not the stacked teams like it used to be. Well, that's because there's more teams. Correct. The '80s had less teams, so you had more talent on those teams. Every t- every team had a star back then. We've got teams right now where no one can even name anybody. No. Like his Orlando Magic. <laughs> I mean, the biggest name on Orlando is Aaron Orlando Gordon, Magic. and that's because Whoa. of Duncan. I'm sorry. Ugh. <laughs> like, I mean, but no, like, I mean, Aaron Gordon's the biggest name he has for Orlando, and that's because of the dunk contest, not because of how good of a player yeah. he is, but because right. he can dunk. Where I can't argue. Yeah, where we're back in the day, like <laughs> every team had at least one bona fide star player. You can't say that right. now with all these expansions um, that that have taken place since since eighty nine, right? Essentially, when Orlando and Charlotte and um, and Miami and Minnesota came into the league, and then the new Charlotte, and it's like and you just you keep on sitting yeah. that herd. But when you had twenty six teams, and you had all these guys on them. And they were going to war, and nowadays no one wants to go to war. No, they don't. So, and you know, it's tough. But I, I love Bron. I give him his props. I give him his flowers. I'm just not going to, I'm not going to overrate him because other guys have gone to you know nine, ten finals and all and all that stuff. And and, and the thing about Bron is not even him. It's his fans who like to just. I don't. There was a post out there on the internet that said LeBron has. A fifty-six percent chance of making the finals of his career, and Michael Jordan only made fifty-four percent of his field goals. So that's so amazing stat. I'm like, what? How, how, <laughs> why are we comparing field goal percentage to the percentage of chance to make the finals? That's that idiotic. No that and makes zero sense. Like, See, that's why Bron's the goat. That's why Bron's the goat. He has a better chance of making the finals than Jordan had of making a shot. So I was like, okay, that's stupid. Here, let's do this. Hmm. <laughs> Sam Jones, he went to the finals. 
let's see, 92% of the time of his career. Let's compare that to LeBron's um, free throw shooting. LeBron's a 70% free throw shooter of his career. Right. I, I, Sam Jones went to the finals 90% of the time of his agree. career. It, it's, it's idiotic. So my thing ain't Bron, Bron is not Bron himself. It's his fans. Like, you know. It is the, the fans are toxic. And Nick And Nick Wright <laughs> out there just making things up on television. Oh, Nick Wright. Yeah. But let, let's talk about a different goat. Let's talk about football goats. Who is your football goat? And it's I'm Tom, talking about goat. It's player. Tom Brady. It's Tom Brady. It's Tom Brady? It's Tom Brady. It's That's the end of the Tom discussion. Brady. I did not expect it's, that. Wow. I it was love either, Tom okay, Brady. so here so when I heard you were from I heard you were living in Jersey, I was like, oh man. Because Lawrence Taylor is number two for me, right? It's it's Tom Brady okay. or Lawrence Taylor. That's, that's that's right now my strong list. And then as I've thought out loud about it, Jerry Rice was in my mind too. Th- thank you. And and so that's that's really where I'm landing. But I'm landing on Tom Brady for a few reasons. One this season is going to solidify that Tom Brady is the best. The Patriots look abysmal. Um, they look horrible. And and Cam Newton is a very good quarterback. He's uh, not the leader that Tom is, though. He he's not. Yeah, he he does not have a leadership. I'm not in the room to judge Cam Newton's <laughs> leadership ability. Um, so I'm not going to speak to no, that. We, but I we've speak. seen it on TV. I love we yeah, love yeah, Cam. I, I, but my, nah. look, my Twitter Cam. my Twitter header is Cam Newton when he's like leaning back and he's like. Like, I mean, I, I, I'm a, I'm a big Cam Newton. Yes, I'm a very big Cam Newton fan, actually. But I think with Tom Brady, what I really appreciate is, is again the same, and this is the same conversation I think with like LeBron, in the sense of longevity of career to keep the excellence rolling at the age he has. I mean, we kind of saw Peyton to see Peyton have a couple of good years towards the end there with Denver, but then kind of fade. That's not happening with Tom. And he's yeah. he's elevating Tampa Bay. Obviously, they're bringing everybody in, but I think Tom Brady is is really the best. And I think the quarterback is the most unfair position because it gets all the criticism, but also all the glory. Yeah, yeah. You win and lose with the quarterback, but there's only like 50 people that can do it on the planet very well. And True. I mean, and that's so. I I just think that that really sets them apart. Um. So I'd say Tom Brady. Lawrence Taylor is incredible. In regards to physical raw talent, it's Lawrence Taylor. Um, but but in regards to a football player, I, I am going to say Tom Brady. I, I think for okay. the longest time I was fighting it, but I'm staying Tom Brady. If, if he wins this year, I don't know how people are going to fight it. This year well, in particular the, is kind of like the nail in the coffin, but I think the argument can be made already. The the, the quarterback goat, uh, if he wins this year, the quarterback goat debate is over. Like he, As much as Montana's yeah. 4-0 is impressive – Winning seven in two cities, um, and winning a seventh at forty-three years old, like that is a. And also, unlike LeBron, who is four and six, he's six and. and no, 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 no. I mean, this is a not to LeBron, but we're back on LeBron. No, no, I mean, this is not a not. We this both did it. It's comparison. okay. I did it too. Um, LeBron is four and six. Brady is six and four. Going mm-hmm. to that many makes you look better when you have one more than you've lost. There's so, a way bigger difference too with going to a Super Bowl ten times, right? Than Super going Bowl to an NBA Final so ten times. So hard. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. is just insane yeah. amount of, of Super Bowl appearances that he has. It's one or done in, in the NFL, which yeah. was what makes the NFL yeah. so special, yeah. right? But I, I would say that I, in regards to just raw talent, though, I, I'd have to speak to Lawrence Taylor of just like nobody has edge rushed and played coverage as well as that cat could. And when yeah, you can get Bill Belichick to say that's the best player I've ever coached, that's a pretty strong endorsement for me it to is. be on the list. My my only thing about LT is how much of that was cocaine, and not, and not just jokingly, <laughs> but how much of that was co- like because you, you can do a whole lot of crazy feats when you're on cocaine. <laughs> um, you know you got a, you know you've got a lot of energy, you've got a lot of juice when you're on when you're on that white powder. And I get it. I, I have the he, deepest respect for LT because he was just such a dominant player. And he, I mean, he was the first one to really solidify that this defensive player is changing the entire aspect of the game and taking away. You, you're not going to go to his side because why would you run at Lawrence Taylor? Like, it, it doesn't make right. any sense. <laughs> so uh, I, I completely understand where you're coming from there. Um, I I go with Jerry Rice personally because he has Wayne Gretzky like numbers, uh, where he has the win in an era where he shouldn't have. In an era where you've got guys who've played a complete era in a past happy 
you know, where they're passing 50% of the time or higher, when he was playing in an era where you where you threw 30% of the time mm-hmm. and he still has the numbers and the receptions and the touchdowns, it's like if he if he plays in this era, it's astronomical. But he got those numbers in a, th- in a run first, run second, throw third era. So it's like what – and, he, and he's just such a natural player, great talent, and he also was so great, like Brady, at an, you know, at a later age, age forty in Oakland, helping that team make the Super Bowl, as a forty-year-old starting wide receiver, right? You know, yeah. like that. He's he's up there from, but those 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 are. I, it's I it's tough. You. It's a tough list. It, I'm it's not, a tough I'm, one. I'm not refuting it, Jerry Rice either. I can't like. I get it. You know. But Brady, but Brady, if Brady wins another one, I to me that would put him over over LT for me, and him and Jerry would be battling out one and two for me, and oh, it's man. it's really tough. It's it's crazy, man. It, it, it's, it's insane. It's, it is crazy. And if Barry Sanders won to retire, good God. Um, <sighs> Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I won't. I won't. Let's let's just rip the band off. Man. Let's shift to, oh, uh, to let's shift to the geek world. Um, <laughs> so, Max, what is your biggest uh, fandom on, on the geek side? Like, what what part uh, from geek side really like? Someone looks at it and says, "Okay, well, yeah, I get why. I get it. He's a geek." And, and yeah, this- I mean, for me, it's been it's been Marvel the last five five years. I mean, when I was younger, it was really like super. This is a super deep cut. Power Rangers stuff was like my jam as a kid. That's so like okay. that that resurgence is coming. Oh, I'm not apologizing for it. I was just like deep cut. <laughs> um, it's coming back. Like it's really coming back. Like they're getting movies and stuff, and I think the TV shows are kind of getting back into mainstream a little bit for kids. But like just Power Rangers was really fun as a kid, and that kind of opened doors to like this kind of stuff. But I, but I think Marvel just has been great because it's not just geeky and 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 fun it's it's enmeshed in the culture it's mm-hmm. enmeshed in day-to-day lives it's speaking to things that are very difficult to talk about um in a way that's unique and in particular with the MCU the two movies that come to my mind on that subject today more than ever are Black Panther and um Captain America the Winter Soldier and just mm. those two movies my two favorite movies what those yeah <laughs> literally what those two movies mean culturally right now to what's going on are massive and mm-hmm. And so I, I just so so Marvel for me is is my is my shtick, um, and I love it. I'm not ashamed of it. But I but I'd say Power Rangers is like the deep cut for those okay. that are like looking really deep. I love I, I love a good um, uh, you know I, I'll I'll my my buddies love Dragon Ball Z more than I do. But I'll, if that stuff's on, I'll watch it. Uh, there's a ton of nerdy things I'll watch, but those two things, Power Rangers and Star and excuse me, um, MCU are like massive hits for me and my family. Our basement's like covered with marvel stuff <laughs> that's awesome it's, insane. it's ridiculous awesome. it's ridiculous so we won't we won't debate on this one um so this is gonna be a quick one <laughs> hopefully oh no who who is us. your who's who's the goat ranger who is your top ranger your favorite ranger oh gosh it's the white ranger right it's gotta be tommy is the white ranger I mean, but, but see, well, yeah. you, you said white though so yeah i know it, some people could say green right I get like, the debate. Uh, old, older has like me we say green generally Oh my gosh! Yeah, I don't know how you could do that, but okay, I'm I'm nervous just talking about that. I, it's it's white, right? Like you just got a all white ranger. We're all in. Uh, I was on a pot. Uh, I'm I'm with you on the no white question. Ranger. I love the Green Ranger. I love Green Ranger, but then you but know, you knew just, you but knew things were serious dude, when though. the flute so popped is, out. Which one? Are, so are you really yeah, picking white yeah. over green though? I'm with I'm with white. I went Max. On okay, I'm that that's white. okay. I'm still rolling white, yeah. <laughs> well, see, I'm I'm old enough to remember when Power Rangers first came out, and there was no green or white ranger. So my favorite ranger was was Zach, the Black Ranger, because he was the most like me, and my he man was, so was cool. always wearing Malcolm X gear. So I, I, I actually didn't, I did, I didn't, I identify obviously, I identify more with, with Zach, but I just couldn't. The white tiger zord, the tiger zord, the, the tiger zord was dope, but I liked Jason better as Green Ranger because I liked, even when he turned good. I always liked that there was a hint that he would sometimes go a little too far. He could always a hint like he could always go back to being yeah. evil. I liked that story wise, and it was just cool. And the Dragon Zord was dope. The Dragon Zord was cool, and the Dragon I mean, Zord has more definitely more fans than the White Tiger Zord. 
They needed to keep Zach around way longer. That guy left way too early from the show. Yeah. He needed to stay for a couple more seasons. He's still a fan favorite. He oh, is yeah. he is a dynamite follow on Instagram. An oh yeah. Absolute oh, yeah, dynamite yeah, follow on Instagram. He is yeah. great. He's a He's probably if, if, he's probably he's doing the best fan wise. Dude. Um of the original sure. of the original 5. And he deserves it. Yeah. He deserves it. Every dollar he makes, he deserves. Yes. Like Shout if I saw him on the street, I'd freak out. <laughs> you probably oh freak gosh. out. On, you probably freak it's out. Black how short he is. Uh, uh, take a picture with me. I would know. You probably be like, dude, dude, you're that hand. small. How short are you? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know he's Wayne Brady's half brother. No way. I did not, I know, did that. not yes. know that. He Walter Jones is Wayne Brady's half brother. He's so much cooler. Wow, I didn't know that. I didn't think Walter Jones <laughs> yeah, could just, get cooler to me, but he just got cooler. Right. <laughs> you just took him up with another right? <laughs> they, 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 the, there needs yeah. to be like a part two of Wayne Brady's Chappelle skit with Walter Jones yes. in it. One hundred percent. I need to see that. <laughs> Wayne Brady's the man. So you mentioned some things oh, that yeah. you that you'll dig, um, that you you know, watch whatever if they're on. Being that you've got you know your bros on your podcast, what mm-hmm. fandom do they wish you were more enthusiastic about? Star Wars, and so yes, so this is great. So like <laughs> Matt, you and I were on a podcast a couple weeks ago. This yes. is this is hilarious. And this we is a talk, great. Story. And we got to talk Star Wars. Yes, and I am <laughs> bottom five percent of people you want to talk Star Wars with in regards to nerd culture. I know enough to get by the conversation. But you don't want me coming with you on trivia night. Like you don't want. I'm not your guy. I'm not gonna help at all. Oh man, I really, I really should prepare some trivia questions. <laughs> oh gosh. So on that episode we were on, Tony was like, "All right, we're gonna, I'm gonna pull up characters of Star Wars, obscure characters, and you got to name the characters." And I'm like, pooping my pants, right? Like I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not gonna get any of these right, and they're all gonna make these get, people I don't know are gonna make fun of me. And uh, he ended up, the game ended up being more fun where it was like, say who they aren't, like make a yes. fan, funny joke. But they were wrong answers like, only, which was the great. Star Wars thing. I was like, I, I am so, I, I like Star Wars. I got no issue with it. <laughs> and we had a great conversation about Star Wars we on the episode. You got to go check that out. Um, but Star Wars is the thing. And and everybody loves it so much. And and honestly, I just kind of don't get it a little bit. Like there's, there's, a, <laughs> there's a part of me that doesn't really fully get it. And even my buddies on my podcast, the Infinity Bros, like, they're just obsessed with this stuff. Like the Mandalorian comes out and they stay up to like 12 to watch it. I'm like, what right. are you doing? Yep. <laughs> I'm like, what are you? It'll be on tomorrow. What are you doing? Come on. I don't See, get the, it. Right there. That that's a guy who's going to stay up till midnight to, to watch it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, I, have, I know. I have. I've, I've stayed up all night and binge watch like series. So you're big yeah, on Star Wars. Wars. You're big Star. Oh, it's he, he's, oh, big, he's bigger. He's oh, bigger on Star huge. Wars than I am. Yeah. He's huge. huge. Oh gosh. I like, I don't know. So much of this room is like Star Wars. That's awesome. I, I can just grab stuff. I don't know. He, he but, can't um, beat my toy though. I still have the best toy. As yeah, the R two D two. That's sweet. R- he's he's got the R two D two. Right. But um, um, that's only because you know <laughs> I couldn't convince my parents to pay that much money for it. I don't know how I um, did it, but I did it. <laughs> I can't convince myself to pay that much money for that right now. I don't blame your parents much money less. So like, are were you big on reading like the books then too? Like, like, and like all the canon um, yeah, stuff. Yeah, I got into the. I mean, I got into the books like later. Oh um, my gosh! Because so, like, my Star Wars story actually started in high school. Um, I wasn't really into Star Wars like that until like high school when the prequels started coming yep. out. And my science teacher at the time, we were in like this small. I was I'm, like talking about nerds. So I was in this like science research class, and it was like five of us in the class, and you had to like interview to get in and like you had to get recommendations from teachers and whatever whatever so um obviously we had a lot of time to just talk because it was just the five of us in this class and we did independent research and stuff like that so um this was my sophomore year in high school and the teacher of the class like he was a huge star wars nerd and so when the prequels was coming out like every day we would go to class and he's just like talking about star wars and how he can't wait till the prequel comes out and the like all this stuff and i'm like what are you talking about like i had no idea what was going on so um my dad was like hey i got the star wars like 
DVDs. And okay. Like, oh, cool. I finally get to find out what this is all okay. about. And I started watching them and I just like fell in love with the like the stories and the like everything. And I was just like, and I think part of it too was like his enthusiasm for it. Like, you know, just kind of rubbed off on me because I was just like, oh, now I can go to school and I can talk about this stuff and like not be lost in the conversation. Right. Um, So that's how I got into it. And then from there i just like i love to read like science fiction fantasy and all that stuff so then i was like i want more star wars so then of course you go to the books yep. and you start finding all the fan fiction <laughs> and all the lore and all this other stuff and you're like oh like it goes so deep <laughs> and um yeah so yeah i was like i was one of those oh dude who, love it yeah. you'd fit in you <laughs> would literally fit them. in with our guys in my <laughs> my buddy's spot all my other buddies in the podcast like one of them Jarrett, like he makes these little Star Wars action figures and like paints them. Like this is like the culture of Star Wars that I don't understand yeah. in the slightest. Yeah. <laughs> and like I love it. I think Star Wars is fun to go watch. I'll go see the movies, but like the depth is like too I think much. It's just when you when you really get into like the deep, deep I mean it's changed now with the whole Disney taking yeah. over and relaunching everything. But when you get into the deep lore of like what they're calling now the expanded universe and or the can the legendary universe or whatever they're calling it now, um, that's what really kind of gets you. Yeah, in there. the good stuff that Disney like ignored this. or just forgot existed. Yeah, because like when you started looking at like the old Republic and <sighs> Love like it. all that stuff, oh, it's like that's what like the story, the real real yeah. stories are. Where you're just like, oh man, this is amazing, this is great, and then like you know you get to see all these different worlds and you get to see all the different types of Jedi's and uh, Sith lords and all this stuff. Yeah, I guess I watch this all day. Yeah, but the Jedi um, Academy, the Sith Academy. I don't blame you. Korriban, yeah. um, Dan Tuween. Yeah, like there's so much um, in there that yeah, it just it just, it just takes you down that that kind of you know like like most fantasy you get into like the lore like that's what draws everybody to fantasy right is the lore and the backstories and the world building and all that and um, so like that's what the legends kind of gave to us Star Wars okay. fans was like. It gave us what the movies did, yeah. Because you're like, you know, you watch, you see the movies, and you're kind of like, um, once you see the movies, you're like, okay, but what was happening on the, all these other worlds, right? You know, um, and that's what the books gave you. They gave you all of that, and you're just like, oh, okay. And then you get to see, and then when they start tying that into the movies, then you're like, oh, okay, like yeah, you meant he mentioned this master, and you're like, okay, I remember that master from the book, and. Like, you know, stuff like that. And then you like, it just, you just, it, it all connects. And then, yeah, it just makes for a good story. But, um, which I, I like to see that Disney's now kind of bringing some of that stuff back into. Well, um, they have to because their writing has been horrid. <laughs> which is what yeah, we talked yeah. about in that podcast. Yes. We were just <laughs> raking them yeah, through yeah, the, we terrible. were just pulling them through. We were like, Disney, get it together. Well, it, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's the Mandalorian's cool. sweet, though. The Mandalorian is sweet. The Mandalorian, and honestly, is Max, because you enjoy the Mandalorian, if there's one thing I think that would also help increase your fandom, um, it would be playing Knights of the Old Republic. Dude, you're like the fifth person to tell me that. Because like, so it, many people tell me I should play that game. Zach, trust me, yeah. as someone who owns it on three different platforms, um, the game is entirely fun. Now it's from like 2003. So Sweet. it's yeah, a it's, it's an old Bioware game. So there's it's good. It's got a great story. Obviously, it's going to be a little clunky because of just the fact that it's an old game. Yeah, it's probably gone. Yeah, <laughs> but um, it's an amazing story. And the beauty of it is that not only is it an amazing story, but it's not about the Skywalkers. And that's part of the problem with Star Wars right now is everything is still focused on the Skywalker story and not around yeah. other great Star Wars stories. But yeah, nice little so republic out there trust me that will help you be like hey you know what i kind of get it now you may not start making figurines um i'm not there <laughs> i'll am, leave that for my buddies I, I, I'm i'll let them handle there. that i am not going to make figurines i don't have the dexterity to make figurines <laughs> it ain't gonna happen <laughs> yes like it's just Same. It's not gonna happen but i will read yeah. a book i might write a fan fiction or two something like that um i we, we Past episodes of this show, we have postulated what could be in Star Wars. Um, yeah, like I'm like they're talking about these three new books that are coming out. They're supposed to be um, centered around the. Is it the old Republic? No. no, I wish it was, but it's not. It's, it's the, the new, new Republic. Republic, I think. Um, 
but yeah, we were we were um some me and some guys that that I used to work with, we were like geeking out about it, and we were like, oh, if they make movies with the old republic, like that's what I really want to see. I want to see a, a, the movies do the old republic. How, sto- how stoked are you for Ahsoka to be in uh, the Mandalorian? Extremely oh, so excited because everyone's freaking out about so that, excited. right? Like, yeah, I can't. Well, because wait. she's she's like <laughs> she's that she's probably everyone's favorite non Skywalker Jedi, right? Like. She's never became a Jedi. Yeah, but she's a force. She, she yeah, but she still can. But she still she's is a Jedi, force. But, you know, <laughs> no, she never became a Jedi. Well, she according to the Google search, it says she's a former Jedi. That's yeah. what it says on Google. I yeah. can only well, tell you what she, was, she was in training. Yeah, so that's what Google says. So she was one. I mean, she was a Padawan. That makes you a Jedi. She just never reached the rank of a master, much like a, yeah. another famous Padawan who never reached the rank of master. Yeah. Right. No, so yeah. she was a Jedi. She just left. She, <laughs> she left says, the order. She says it in the... Just like you know, but so many other great characters in have left the order. Kyle Katan left the order. Jolie Bindo yeah. from K from Knights of the Republic left the order. Like we we actually like a lot of the characters who left the order. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know why? Because the Jedi Order. Oh. We're, we're not, not going to get into that. Gonna get <laughs> we're not going to go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> another hour. I'm just going to um, smile and act like I know what's going on. <laughs> no, but to my, my Max, I'm, I would say definitely, you have an Xbox, right? I don't. I just have a PS4. You, you just have the PS4. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but what you can do is... Do you have an you iPad? Really, if you're really interested. If you have an iPad, you, I think the game is like five bucks on Ooh. iOS. Well, maybe I'll check it out on the iPad yeah. then. Yeah, because I have it on iOS also, and I have it on my MacBook. And I that actually sounds like Xbox. that sounds like a very fun game for five bucks on my iPad. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> like, for the low cost of five dollars, that makes me want it. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, it, I mean it's a great story. It is fantastic. If you don't want to play the game, you can just like I found one time I watched it. I was b- really bored. <laughs> no, no, you're in good company. The These are the things I do too. No, no, no. This is it very good on, company. Yeah, no, I appreciate it this. Was on, so it was on it was on YouTube and someone cut together all the cuts. Oh, nice! And made it into one long like. Movie. That's awesome. <laughs> it was pretty cool. It was like twenty. That minutes is long, legit. But, um, yeah, and it was like, hey, I don't have to play the game, but I get to see love it. The whole story of, you know. The, no, I, I was right. Four ninety nine on on uh, on i on the app. Store. I'm gonna look into that. I'm gonna yeah. look into it. Get it? It's it's worth that's it. That's sweet, dude. Well, that's a we'll, great deal. But yeah, it, it was yes. a great game. And and and, and if it, you don't like it, I like will give top. you your five dollars back. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I'll, 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 I'll give my buddies a hard time if I don't like it. That's what's going to happen, and then that'll create more content for our show. It'll be wonderful. See, there you They're go. They'll be so excited. They'll, they'll, they'll be so hyped. They're gonna be. So they'll, they'll probably if they if they don't playing. tell them they're gonna because, be like what show did they go to we need to send them a gift basket and thank them <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll take the edible arrangement basket so they're healthy <laughs> edible arrangement yeah. yeah send an edible arrangement over so speaking speaking Nation of podcast. your friends at the Infinity Bros podcast how did that get started so like a lot of podcasts right just a couple buddies that think we can talk we can actually talk about stuff um so I was a radio minor. <laughs> Um, in college, I actually had an internship lined up with a local sports radio station here nice. and, um, kind of chose a different career path. Nice place, the voice. Yes. Yeah, so I was going to do radio. Um, <laughs> and, uh, we found a voice. We found another voiceover uh, actor. Let's mark that down. There we go. Voiceover uh, actor. Like, um, cause when we first started talking, I was like, man, his mic presence is incredible. Yeah, I, I can, I can, I can, I can navigate my way through a mic. Um, so I was like, "Hey guys, we should all get get um, you know, microphones and do this." And I said, "I'll edit it." And so one of my other buddies, Isaac, who kind of runs all of our social media stuff, was really passionate about that and has really taken it. And I mean, it's just kind of grown. I mean, we have a deep community like you guys. We we call it the uh, Infinity Bros universe. Uh, it's very deep. It's everywhere. It's infinite. And so, like, Geek Nation podcast is part of the Infinity Bros universe. And uh, so, like, that's just how we. That's how we are. So, it, it started just like with kind of us just getting out there and doing something. But it's really exploded and ballooned into this. Like, I'm not talking with people I've never met in my life on a computer. Then I'm having a time of my life. This is fantastic. Um, and so, uh, yeah, that's kind of how we got started. I I think for us, we just really we we like talking about these things. But we want a healthy way to utilize this as opposed to sitting around the campfire, proverbial campfire, or the proverbial game night table 
having the same discussions over and over. Our wives need a break from hearing it. <laughs> so this, thus we're here, and it's a much better time when I can close my door and my wife can go upstairs and go to bed and not worry about what's going on here. So it works, yeah. But, it, I mean, it's it, it, it really runs because of the people on it. I mean, my friends are hilarious. They're ridiculous. and uh, they. But, but everybody kind of does their own thing. Like, we do stuff on streaming. We have There's six of us, so it's just nice. We can do streaming stuff. We can do a couple episodes a week. Like, we just we, we kind of are able to get more quantity done versus people who have two or three. Um, that's hard. It's just hard to create content. And so... Yeah, we know. <laughs> so, like, it's just nice. Like, somebody will go on one day, somebody will go on another day, and then, like, you know, Jarrett, one of our other guys, he'll run our Discord channel. Um, and just, like, it just kind of flows well. So, I think... It's a unique blend of friendship, uh, passion for the things we're talking about, just like you guys are talking about, but also, um, you know, just building community. It's fun to build community with people across um, the world that you don't know, and uh, it's it's exciting to bring them in and part of your extended universe. That's kind of how we look at it. So, yeah, I'd say that's how it is. That's a long-winded answer. That's awesome. That's a fantastic That'll work. Answer. That was great. Yeah, I think um, we're in a similar boat. Uh, yeah, you know, two guys are just we were like, yeah, we're always debating, arguing about this stuff. Let's put it out there. Let's just put it on. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure there are other people like us. Uh, the other thing with us too was just like um, the culture that we grew up in. Both yeah. of us, it was just like you. There was no place for mm. us. You know, there's no <clears> place <throat> for this cool kid kind of jock who was also a nerd who liked to read fantasy books and talk about comic books know, and anime. it's exciting that that's comic changing that's like changing now I, it is but it, then it's like I, I, in some ways i kind of hate you it get, you yeah get, you yeah. it was your thing you you weren't you weren't there you don't know what it was like you weren't you know it's like the old kobe like you weren't shooting no. you weren't shooting movie no you were not yeah <laughs> you weren't there when it was yeah. cool <laughs> um <laughs> crazy story here before i'll let i'll yeah. let you I, so with my job, I work with high school kids and just get to know a lot of high school kids. So I was at I was at a family's house that I'm really close with, and one of their students, their son's is ninth, ninth ninth grader. He's in his garage and he's got like four girls and two kids in there, two guys in there. I'm like, what are they doing? And he goes, Oh, the, Brandon's just doing his. That's his Dungeons and Dragons group. He was outnumbered four girls to three guys as the dungeon master in his group, and I was like, wow. That is a sign of the times. Yes, things have changed mightily. Yeah. yeah. Drastic. Yeah, because it if, was like my man. In the eighties, if you said you played Dungeons and Dragons, one you were um, <laughs> you, you were definitely in the Satanic Church for and, sure. And two, uh, and <laughs> oh, two, yeah. no woman was going to talk to you for uh, sure. Yeah, no. crazy, like no. insane. That, that was not going to work. I remember. So I remember this is like middle school. Um, this kid that he was like he was um like he was he was nerdy and kind of just like kept to himself and stuff like that and like but he could draw like really well and so like he used to just kind of just sit around you know and just drawing and stuff like that and i remember he used to have like he's walk around with the magic the, the gathering cards and like he'd be like playing and like you know reorganizing his deck and stuff like that so one day like i'm talking to him and i'm like yo what is that and so he's like explaining it to me and i was like that sounds like fun. Like it sounds, <laughs> that, sounds, cool, right? that sounds amazing. And, um, can I play? Yeah, I was like, ah, oh, can I play? <laughs> like, so he's like teaching me. Like we were on the the bus or thinking, and he was like teaching me how to play and like, you know, the, the point system and all that stuff. And I was like, this is a lot of fun. And I'm like, but who am I gonna play with? Because like none of my all my friends are gonna be like, you're a nerd. Like what are you? Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? So I used to like sneak like after school. And like go play with him. Like That's go, like, awesome. Play behind, like, behind that is so school. awesome. Like, me, me, me underneath we the bleachers, like, for sure. <laughs> it's insane. Because it was like, because like I, it was oddly enough, like I was pretty popular in school. Um, I guess probably because I played sports, but I also was super nerdy and like, like I said, straight A's, and I was all in all these like AP classes and stuff like that. So it was like it was always weird. Like I remember my friends would be like, "Wait, you're smart." Like, you know, because they'd just be like, I didn't know, like, you know, like we, especially like when poor car time would come around or whatever. And they're like, oh, man, you know, I got a D or whatever. And they're like, Dave, what'd you get? And I'm like, um, A's and B's. Uh, or I roll or, <laughs> yeah. you know, straight A's or whatever. And like, you were you hey. were literally the definition of a nerd. <laughs> yeah, I was. That's hilarious. <laughs> and 
like I used to geek out about science stuff and all that stuff. So, um, but yeah, that was my little funny story. Like, yeah, it wasn't cool to play Magic of the Gathering. You know, I had to go sneak behind the <laughs> like under the bleachers. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I remember. Um, I think I still have them actually. Like, I bought like a deck, and like I like hit it from like my friends and wow. my brother. Uh, Cause my brother's like a year and a half. Well, no, he's two years younger than me. So, um, you know, we had the same friends and stuff like that. And like, I would like hide it in my room. Like, <laughs> so that's I it. love that. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, my, my, my story is very similar to that, but, uh, I won't go into it, but needless to say, uh, most people did not share my enthusiasm for Star Trek or, anime especially in the 80s like i was watching um well actually i was watching christian anime superbook and flying house and then i was also watching um i, I love really superbook, superbook and flying house. I, it. Sh- I loved it <laughs> I, i'm grown man my kids ain't even watch it no more because they're preteens i still watch it um but i was also watching you know robotech um and uh you know dragon ball z you know Cause that's the, that's I mean it's technically an easy cartoon, um, easy anime. So I was watching all that stuff, and you know, guys in the football team, guys in the basketball team that that never heard of it, let alone understood it. Um, they were not going to watch anything with subtitles. Um, you know, <laughs> you know, yeah, because yeah, like wa- watch yeah, that watching martial favorite. arts movies that weren't dubbed was too hard for them. So oh my gosh, yeah. So I. I just didn't, uh, I had to play both sides. So I, uh, like, uh, like you know, said, you know, we were having these conversations and I was like, Hey, let's just record and see if anybody listens. And you know, we've, I love been, it. <laughs> we've been, we've been having fun and Here we've been we doing it in sense. And well, whether the people were listening or not, we keep recording. So, Hey, we'll take it. Yeah. Awesome. So we, but it's, it's, expanded. it has expanded. It's definitely become popular. I mean, what, how many people we got in our group now? Two, two eighty, I think. Last time, uh, last time yeah. I, I had to prove somebody. I'm like I didn't realize this many jeeks were out there. Oh, there's more. <laughs> there's more, and then we're we're trying to get them to come out the come out the uh, the closet, trying to you know embrace their their inner their <laughs> the inner jeek closet. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You can yeah. only be one or the other. You can't be both, apparently. But no, we 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 break that mold. Which is so weird. Yeah, it's very strange. Well, you know, I mean, I got to give it to Marvel for definitely helping with that. Well, see, but, you know. but you know, some of that animosity has come out because of Marvel. Because now, you know, they're like, people come up to me and like, yeah, you know, so-and-so was great. And I love that character. I'm like, man, you wouldn't listen to me talk about that character ever, <laughs> you know, five years ago. Like, what are you talking about? Or hey. they want to correct you on it. Ant-Man's such a good movie. You could have cared less. You were mocking Ant-Man years right? ago. I'm like, oh, right. oh, Ant-Man, you, you're talking. Because, see, when people say Ant-Man now, they're talking about Scott Lang. When I say Ant-Man, right. I'm talking about Hank Pym. Yep. Hank Pym. That, yeah. you know, like, even – for like so i was in a i was i was in a conversation with somebody before black panther came out mm-hmm. and i told them i said you are going to see a movement you've never seen before with black panther after this movie comes out i said there's going to be people that are going to claim they're from wakanda moving forward <laughs> i said that like a year before and he's like why would they say that i'm like because the history of america says they're going to say that they're yeah. right? like because they don't have anything else to say so they're going to say wakanda and sure yeah. enough, what happened? Wakanda forever happened. There it yeah. is. And chimney. <laughs> Shoot, I, I mean, did, didn't Trump say something about like Wakanda or something? Everybody po- says some, something some about Wakanda. Some politician was like, "Yeah, we've got to keep our trade, whatever Wakanda." And people were like, "Dude, you realize Wakanda's not real, right?" <laughs> <laughs> and and you know, Wakanda probably wouldn't be trading with you right now. Yeah, if you're exactly. Trade exactly. With they don't really trade with anybody. That's kind of how Wakanda's they are. going to be like, "Yeah, right. that's kind of how it works." That's how they roll. But that's no, how, I mean, like it's. <laughs> It is interesting how Marvel's done that. It's been really interesting to see, and we'll. See, I mean, how long can they go? It's a real well, question. They, well, if they build Wakanda Land and, and Walt Disney World, I'm just going to move there. Um, you know that's coming. It, <laughs> I think it, we it all. There, it's that's it totally down down the way. That's it, that's coming. They would be foolish to not try. At this point, just build a Marvel World. But no one wants to live in a Marvel, Marvel yeah. universe. Yeah. No, because a Marvel, Marvel universe. universe is a not a fun place to live. If you make it Wakanda, that's one thing because it's always been hidden and protected and safe. The rest of yeah. the Marvel world is not a fun place to live. That would not. That's be fair. Nice. You, you don't want. You don't want to go to. 
No, I don't, I don't want to live, live in, uh, on Earth 616. You don't want to go Earth to Hell's Kitchen? Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> Harlem's bad enough as it is. Are you Hell's sure? Hell's Kitchen, like, yeah, I ain't trying to we live We could make this. a fictional Hell's Kitchen where it's always dark and raining. <laughs> yeah, see? Yeah, I, I ain't trying to live I there. think it'd be great. Always dark and raining. <laughs> well, that's going to be... That's the only way he can see. If it's yeah. Or, and, or if you're Daredevil, <laughs> he, he can't truly see anyway, so that's, you know. Yeah. Or if you're drunk like Jessica Jones. That's what I, thought I mean. Um, yeah. <laughs> You've got you either you're hanging with the drunk chick or you're hanging with the the blind guy. And yeah, yeah, it's exactly. <laughs> and, and occasionally you see Spider-Man. occasionally Spider Man comes through <laughs> Hell's Kitchen or in Punisher. That's that's fun. Better hope you didn't jaywalk Punisher. that day before you get a cap busted in you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna move on to um, amazingly to our what are you P W C playing, watching, or creating? We're gonna talk about playing. Uh, we know what Max is going to be playing. Max is going Apparently. to be playing Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Yeah. And then if I'm him, I'm not going to tell Starting. his co host because they'll probably get on him about it. <laughs> and they'll probably make you like record it and like put it on mm-hmm. YouTube or something. Um, mm-hmm. Definitely play the game. Stream it. But you need DNA. <laughs> what have you been playing lately? Or the past week? Uh, <laughs> what have I played this week? Oh, man. What did I play this week? Oh, I was playing No Man's Guy. That's again. okay. Um, I am addicted. That to That is okay as well. I confess. I probably I'm still have more money than you, but that's all right. <laughs> you probably do, and that's all well and good. I worked hard. Yes, I mine. did not. I didn't get a silver spoon shoved in my mouth. Like, like me. <laughs> Yikes! I'm that person. Um, <laughs> worked hard for my stuff. Um, I do need to move my base very soon though, because my planet has it changed your planet. I see. Um, yeah. <laughs> So Max looks really lost. Your um, no Man's Sky is like solo Star Trek. Um, it's a beautiful, fantastic game that you can get on Xbox uh, Steam or on the PS4 if you have Game Pass, which I have now. You can play X, uh, you can play No Man's Sky right now because it is on Game Pass. Is it? Oh, yes. It, 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 there's a lot of things on Game Pass. So I have Game Pass. I just said that. I have Game Pass now, but you did not know that. You need to know. I now have Game Pass. I did it. Um, I was streaming with uh, some of our friends that love Thy Nerd, and we were playing Destiny. They wanted some help getting the Xenophage exotic um, machine gun. I had done it, so like, I'll walk you through it, but I did not have Shadow Keep because I was still playing the free to play version on Xbox. And I was like, wait, I Game Pass is only a dollar for the first month. Maybe I'll just sign up. So I signed up, and uh, Game Pass told me that because I have Xbox Gold, um, which carries over to 2021, that after that $1, I'm not going to get charged that fourteen ninety nine until October 2021. So now I pretty much have a year of Game Pass that's uh, already been paid for. That's pretty, pretty sweet. sweet. And um, I've never played Gears of War. Um, they're all four of them in Game Pass. I've never played, um, even though I have an original Xbox, I've never played Halo. I'm now going to start playing Halo. Um, Halo reminds me so much well, of Well, that's Destiny. because Bungie made Halo and Bungie well, yeah, <laughs> Destiny. Um, so I'm going to play some Halo because I've never played. And um, there, I'm, I haven't, I played Fable 1, but never played Fable 2 or 3. So I'm going to play that too. And there is a uh, whole ton of stuff on Game Pass that I am now going to play. And I'm quite excited. Impressive. Because uh, I did not yeah. expect that I was going to play I any of those. should get Game Pass. You should probably get it, especially since you're planning on getting the system. You should probably get it. I mean, yeah, and I still have my Xbox. That's so, true. Even though, even though you, don't, you haven't touched that thing in like a year. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, once I started gaming on PC, it was just like, PC or oh lord, something. here we go with the PC master race <laughs> stuff. Here we go. Yeah, PC, PC people. That's how you guys are, man. <laughs> Here we go. It's all of you them know, too. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, a, I, I'm not a PC master race though. I, I still do enjoy console. I still do enjoy. Part of it is because like I enjoy just kicking back and like with a controller just in the couch mm-hmm. and not like, sitting at my desk with the mouse and keyboard and all that. That's, um, and I guess because I've always been a casual gamer, you know. Actually, I, I guess I've been a hardcore gamer, but um, you know, a hardcore gaming while casual. I guess You're a medium I'm core either. gamer. That's what we'll call that. Media <laughs> core. While sitting casually, I'm hardcore, but sitting <laughs> casually. Um, 
so yeah like uh you know i have to have my days where i'm like okay i really actually feel like sitting at a desk and playing pc games um so i'm not pc master race but i do see what everybody's been talking about now because before i was like what do i care i don't care um the graphics on ps4 are great graphics on xbox are great like what are you talking about pc is better but now like seeing it for myself i'm like oh now i see what you're talking about <laughs> now it all yep. makes sense um but yeah i'm not one of those like you know, master race knobs like, oh, you guys play on consoles. You know, you're not real gamers. Not yet, uh, yeah, though. I'm not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't betrayed us that far yet. <laughs> but I do enjoy PC games, and also I found them to be cheaper. That's um, true too. Because yeah, like like on Steam, I get stuff on Steam for like, I think I got No Man's Sky for like ten bucks, and yeah. Like you rarely see that on consoles unless it's super old and you know, nobody's playing it anymore, which kind of defeats or, the purpose. Or or your you or someone yeah. named Tim says, Let's all play this game. It's really cheap. And then we buy it and he never plays. Yeah, talking about you Tim. Yeah, we're not gonna talk about um, that. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, well the, <laughs> we're gonna cut this segment short um because we went down a previous rabbit hole. So that is gonna be it for what are you PWC. But we wanna hear from you, Jeeks about what you're playing, what you're creating, and what you are watching. Wait, did we go over what Max we, is we, Yeah, Max is going to be playing Knights of the Republic. No, I'm playing Knights of the Republic. Ma Max has his assignment. Max, Max. I was given homework. I didn't know yeah. I was coming to get homework. Max is now Max homework. knows what the deal is oh, now. Every, everyone leaves the Jeek Nation with homework. <laughs> that's part, that's that's part, part of the job, yeah. All right. You got to discover right, something new when you come on the show. <laughs> I've, I've learned my lesson. I'm learning. Here we are. <laughs> So we are going to, and we, we will definitely follow up with Max after he finishes the game. Um, oh, because there's so many no, questions we're going to have for him. Oh, yeah. The pressure is no, I'm so nervous. On. No, I'm actually like legitimately nervous. <laughs> be nervous. Be afraid. <laughs> we are going to drill you on this game. And we want to know, and we want to hear you gush about how much you love it and how much you wish you would have played oh, yeah. when it came out. And how you're a new... Oh, we'll, yeah, we'll, we don't have to go sure. that far. Uh -huh. We yeah. don't have to go that far. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be great. We're, 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 yeah. <laughs> we're, we're definitely Actually, the grill mother game. We'll just talk to your girls. Yeah. We'll dude, find out. those are the guys. You want to talk Star Wars? You literally <laughs> call all five of them before you call me. <laughs> Like, so how's Max doing? Is, did he actually play? They're gonna movie? be like, they're Close gonna be like, truth. Max is a fake. <laughs> Max is a fraud. <laughs> oh, we won't have Max be a fraud. We won't do that. <laughs> Not at all. Okay. Well, we're gonna go with some quick hits, and I'm gonna promise to make them quick because, yeah, we sure are. You know, who am I lying to? All right. So first, <laughs> sure you will. Brilliant. Iron Fist, new mini series six book series from Iron Fist of Iron Fist from Iron Fist he ain't writing nothing um, from Marvel of Iron Fist it's going to be helmed by legend Larry Hama and artist David Wachter on Iron Fist Heart of the Dragon will this help revive the debacle that Netflix caused in the popularity of Iron Fist I say no. no. Wow. You don't think this can help? Because, you know, like the vast majority of MCU fans or um, in this case, Netflix fans don't read the comics. Right. Um, they think they, they like to pretend that they do. Mm -hmm. They like to pretend that they know all the history and tell you everything about the character that you've been reading about for the last fifteen years. Yeah, um, like, yeah, like when they were like, "Oh, Colleen and and uh, and Danny, they're a couple goals," and I'm like, "Yeah, you know, you know, Danny and Misty right. Knight are married in the books and they have a kid, but you know, whatever." Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Let's just blow Misty Knight so, off. Yeah. yeah. You're right. Let's blow her yeah. off. Yeah. 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 Right. Exactly. So. Um, yeah. I, I don't. You know. What I mean? For the for the the hardcore fans, or even just the casual fans that actually read the comics, it, there's no need to revive, you know, to restore any reputation, because you already know. Yeah, we but we don't claim Finn Jones. The, sorry. Yeah, for I mean, for the 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 rest of the the, the casual fans um, that only watch the movies and only watch the the series. Not gonna, what what about the new? The books. They probably don't even know. But what about the new out. ones? Because like 
the MCU and the Netflix series have created some new people going into the books. Um, Because we had a lot of people that they didn't know. They didn't know that any of those four that on Netflix existed. They didn't know about Daredevil. They didn't know about Luke Cage. They definitely didn't know about Jessica Jones because she's the most obscure of them all. And they likely did not know about Iron Fist. Um, You had two shows that were great. One show that was good and one show, unfortunately, that was a flop. But Defenders was decent enough to you know, warrant possibly someone liking the character of Iron Fist despite the portrayal being lackluster. But I, I, I got to ask, who would want to watch? Who would want to read the books after watching the show? No one. Well, one, you, you know, know that, um, well, one, you know that the martial arts aren't going to be bad now. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, if, 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 I mean, I'm just thinking about it from my, per- like, okay, if I'm new to mm-hmm. Iron Fist and my first introduction to Iron Fist is the Netflix series, I don't <laughs> want anything else to do with Iron Fist. <laughs> like, I mean, I may watch Defenders, you know, just because I like the other mm-hmm. three. Um, but I, outside of that, I'm not going to be like, yeah, you know, let me go look into this and maybe Netflix just did a bad job. Um, yeah, that's not likely going to happen. Like, I'm probably just going to be like, you know what? I'm going to pick up this Luke Cage comic instead, or I'm going to pick up this Daredevil comic instead, or, you know, any other vast number of Marvel comics out there, you know, with the bigger MCU movies, I'll pick up one of those characters, um, rather than Iron Fist, because... That was already terrible, and I have no interest. Unless you're like really somehow, which they didn't even do a really good job of, was like, you know, got into like the backstory, like yeah, the origin really story and stuff. It, at least if they would have did that, then you would be like, oh, you know what? That's pretty interesting. You know what? Let me go back and read the comics, right? Even though the, the show was bad, um, but they didn't even do a good job of that. It was just like they started from him, you know, being back in America and you know basically taking over taking back his company and yeah like you didn't even really see the iron fist until what was that like the third or yeah. fourth episode <laughs> so you're like what is this max it um, looks like your 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 wheels are spinning in your head what do you think I, i'm in the same boat i mean i mean you guys are nailing it i mean the other part is defenders defenders for me was really good mm-hmm. i really like defenders i actually think the deficiencies of season one assisted with defenders because okay, that makes sense. Danny Rand's character was able to not have to be the focal point on a team that, realistically, in terms of power level, he probably could have been the focal point. And in reading the comics, True. he obviously oh, has yeah. much more. He's the and best to fighter. And just completely involved. disregard Kun Lun, yeah, was ridiculous. That was yeah. insane. And to not have the, the the dragon in it, and to just like right. It was just foolish. It didn't look good. But we you're, we're really nailing it, too. Well, and, and the other part is, if we're looking at it from a comic book perspective, love it. I'm excited for this series. Mm-hmm. I don't really care in regards to the MCU, like how the comic does. Right. He's great. He's dynamite. He's a great character. Yes, indeed. Right. Where the MCU yeah. needs to work with this is with Shang-Chi. He mm-hmm. needs to be introduced in that in that mm-hmm. series. But let Shang-Chi be the... Be Shang-Chi. Let him be Shang Chi first, then let's introduce Danny Rand and play on the fact that he's a goofy white guy that got pulled into this weird world. Right. And let's send Shang Chi there, <laughs> and let's explore yeah. through. <laughs> let's explore through through that character's eyes. I want to go to that world in his eyes. I don't want to go there with Danny Rand first. I, I like that idea. Right. Um, and and like Shang Chi. Uh, I don't know if you know, like um, I forget his name, but the the the. The actor that playing Shang Chi from Sa- Kim's Sa- Simu-, Simu Liu, I believe, is his name. I know I, I'm he's, a, he's from mispronouncing Kim- his name. Yeah, he's it's Korean. That's why I always mess it up because I want to. Yeah, because I want to pronounce it with a Chinese, with a Mandarin accent, but it's it's but it's not. He's Korean anyway. And he's from ho- Canada. Yes, he's Canadian. Homeboy, homeboy from Kim's Convenience. <laughs> super um, weird. Posted that uh, they just wrapped up. Um, actually, it's not super weird, um, but I have a lot of Asian friends. Um, who explained to me the whole Chinese and Koreans and Canada thing. Um, but they just finished wrapping up filming Shang-Chi um, after nine yeah. months of filming. So uh, 
20, that movie's going to be dynamite. 2020, 20, 2021's is going to be super dope for that. Oh, gosh, I mean, and it's wait. like pretty much an entirely all Asian cast. Yes. Um, and it's going to be it's going to be fantastic. I am super yes. excited. We're going to get a re- like a kung fu MCU movie. Yeah. I don't think people are ready for that. The kung fu genre is coming back yeah. after that, They're dude. They're not ready. They, yeah, really especially good. if the fight choreography is good. Like if it's, you know it will be. Well, here's the thing: I, I, it better be because the fight choreography has been to me like the biggest drop in the MCU. Eight million cuts wow. in one uh, on on. Well, the, I I okay, here's I, here's I the thing: I'm a bit of a fight fair. choreography. A fair, I'm yeah. a bit of a fight choreographer. I I own fifty Jackie Chan movies. Okay, I'm a bit of a fight choreography snob. Um, I I don't know I, at least fifty Jackie Chan movies. Probably ten Jet Li movies, uh, probably ten Donnie Yen movies. Like, I am a stickler on fight choreography. I hate multiple cuts. I I don't I don't like when the fact that you can't if you can't shoot a fight scene right when mm-hmm. you're pulling away because you're trying to show that there's no you know and trying mm-hmm. to hide the fact that there was no impact and all that. You're that's not a good fight scene to me. I want, I, f- I feel like that's a prerequisite for this one though, right? To, to like me, I feel it like should be. I, I think it should be. I, I I feel like if they drop the ball there, everyone's gonna have negative feedback for this movie. Yes, and that's yeah, why I'm hoping yeah. that it ushers in a better era of fight yeah. choreography for the MCU movies, especially for those who that's fair. do martial arts as part of you know their their main fighting style, um, like the Gamoras and um, yes, you know the Black Widows because. Mm. I'm sorry. When the only shot you can do of Johansson's stunt double is that continued um, head, you know, head scissor take, you know, takeover, mm-hmm. um, take down into, it's like, dude, I, she's done that in four movies now. Like, please shoot another <laughs> shot. That's her bit. That's her bit, though. <laughs> but it's, but again, it's, I get it. I get what you're saying. I do. But I, I get know it. that I'm. I know I'm a bit of a snob when it comes to that. I know my expectations are high. I think it's those. fair. I think it's but, fair. This is this has to be a kung fu movie. That's a fair. Well, it has to be, be a kung fu movie. I agree. Yeah, it's got to be a kung fu. Movie. It's got to be on that I agree. level. Uh, be, and because it's Chang Chi, he's supposed to be the greatest martial artist in you know in the world. Like it's got to be top level. And Kevin Feige, I trust. Kevin's not going to let us down. I do. I yeah I, yeah, yeah he's he's been yeah. good so far. I, <laughs> just don't let J.J. Abrams get his hands on it. No, J.J. and touch oh, J.J. and touching a Marvel movie. You don't have to worry about that. We just we just upset the Star Wars fan. Everybody, calm down. Everybody, calm down. JJ is not doing any Marvel movies. Everybody, calm down. All right. So next next quick hit. Um, okay. We're going back to the heart. We're going back to the hardwood. And this is not a knock on the brawn, but Pat Riley is knocking on the brawn. Pat oh Riley. My gosh. Pat this is Riley stupid. says that the Lakers championship should have an asterisk to it, oh and gosh. the reason why is well, well, I'll see what you think about it. The reason is because Bam was hurt. And Goran was hurt. So he believes there should be an asterisk on this Lakers championship. Max, you're a sore right, loser. Fine. Pat Riley's being a sore loser. He needs to shut his mouth on this subject. This uh, People have been making this argument, in my opinion, and, and I feel very strongly on this. I'm very interested to see what you, th- you think on this. Mm-hmm. I think this championship is very – this goes down as one for the for the record because – the demand mentally on those athletes to do what they did was incredible. Given the circumstances of what happened, was happening culturally, given the demand of what was happening in their in their family lives, there was threat of COVID. I tip my hat to every team. I also think the Heat wouldn't have even been in the finals had they been playing a normal season. I think the Heat would have been out in the second round. I think the Bucks would have beaten them with a home court advantage. I, I think a lot of things would have been different. I think it would have been L.A. versus L.A., uh, and and I think it would have been a much better series. I don't think the the Blazers would have made it in the playoffs. I think so many things didn't happen that would have happened had it been a normal year. I still think LeBron would have won, but this is a sore loser take. I don't buy it. Love Pat Riley, but I I was floored when I read this. I was like, are you seriously saying this? Come on. This is a sore loser take. And the fact that your players got hurt, guess what? That's that's what happens. That's not LeBron's fault. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know what I don't know how that's, that's their fault. That's part yeah. of the game. Well, you know, you, you today it sounds like uh something Max listened to <laughs> when we talked about the bubble and the bubble effect because we yeah. said yeah. <laughs> uh pretty much exactly all of that. 
um, two episodes. I did not listen like, to that episode, no but further. I can't like I, I don't know how people can dog this playoffs. I don't know how they can. The playing field was level for everybody. Well, it can't say it was level, but it was different. Um, I we we both agreed that the Heat would not have made the finals in a regular um, non bubble playoffs. Um, the Bucks definitely probably would have won. And this is a different situation. Um, it's never happened like this before. We've they've never had a situation like this where there's got to be where there's a uh, a pandemic, and you've got this enclosure. And it's a different style of basketball. And we talked about that in depth in the last episode. So if you want to hear that in depth, watch the last or listen to the last episode. We go yeah. in depth about why there's differences because Scotty Pippen made comments about it. Um, yeah. I'm prob, but I also I also predicted predict, yes that if LeBron won. Somebody was gonna come out for sure. Say, I said multiple people that they were gonna say this one doesn't count because this, 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 and this. Um, you were correct. I, I feel like Pat. I mean, I feel like Pat Riley could have came up with a better excuse than, oh yeah, well, two of our key players are hurt. Like I, uh, I don't buy that either. Um, because you can, I mean, you can use that excuse on Thank any you. finals. That, that that was that was the point I was <laughs> like, gonna make if you didn't say it. Yeah, every finals has had so you know, like you go all the way back to you're like, well, you know, uh, yeah, well, you know, you, you know, if Kareem would have gotten hurt against the Sixers, the, they probably uh, wouldn't even OKC need Game Seven. Won. Yeah, uh, well, if uh, you know, if uh, if Isaiah doesn't get hurt in '88 with that ankle, you know, the Pistons win in '88. Well, uh, if Magic's right. hamstring isn't hurt in '89, then the Lakers win in '89. If Kobe well, doesn't tear his 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 Achilles, like yeah. oh, he, they would have gone on a run. Right. Come on, they would have gone. Yeah, on. come they, on. They were poised I mean, for it. On. Absolutely, you know. Yeah. Like, so, yeah don't don't don't, uh, don't yeah, throw I, injuries I mean, in think, my. Like, there's there's eight yeah. million reasons why you could put an asterisk on this entire season. Agreed. Yeah. But injuries is I mean, not one just, of them. Even just the fact that it wasn't not yeah, a well, chance. Injuries not is the chance. one should, reason injuries that makes, shouldn't even be in the conversation. Yeah, injuries is the one reason that makes zero sense. Makes you can talk Pat, about COVID. Pat Riley should be grateful his team was even there. Oh, absolutely. that is ridiculous that the Heat were even there. That like it was it was borderline. That alone could be a reason for why you could make an argument that LeBron shouldn't get credit for a title because right. they were playing the Heat. Yes. That nobody, and not even loyal Heat fans were like, they weren't like, we're going to the finals. They were like, crazy. They matched up so poorly against the Lakers. It was, uh, Jimmy had to play out of his mind twice. He played out of his yeah. mind the entire yeah. series, but those two particular games, yeah. And I know, but he had, to, he had to play out of his mind just to have a chance to win is right. the point I'm making. And yeah, I mean. he And, I, and as much as I respect <laughs> Goran Dragic, Yes, he was their second leading scorer, their leading scorer leading up to the finals. Uh, since when has Goran Dragic been that type of a difference maker for any team he's been on? Like yeah. he's good, but yeah, he's, he's not, not that. He's not, he's not that caliber. dude. You he's know? not AD. Yeah. He ain't AD level. He, he, yeah, he's no. not that level dude. And Bam is good, and Bam probably should be the most improved player of the year. But Bam also is not that dude. You no. Know? no, and way. they showed it by winning. You know, without Bam and without Goran. Yeah. So like don't 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 act like you know without these guys you would have been completely sunk because clearly you weren't. Pat Riley's crying. Yeah, and I, and Pat which, Riley's which, crying. He's chill. What shocks me is that he's yeah, crying, and that, that shocks is me the too. reason why. Like, bro, there's that's what I mean. I mean, just you could something, something better, better than like injuries. That. Oh yeah, what are you it's, talking it's, it's, about? Just, yeah, injuries. Like, what? what, yeah. what, 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 what so then, then no one's a real champion because you know what. Yeah, everybody yeah, every has somebody got injuries. hurt. Come so on. you know, you know, Bird gets hurt. Well, that oh, that, that one doesn't count because Bird's, you know, Bird's back is hurting him. Yeah, Isaiah's don't buy it. I, come on, ridiculous. Part All of right. life. That's part of how it goes, people. Moving on. Yeah. Um, November twenty seventh, twenty twenty, is the release date for the Nike Kobe Five Pro Tro Bruce Lee's gentlemen. Copper drop. Give a click on the link if you I'm if copy. you haven't seen him there, Max. I have I've seen him. I just wanted to look at a picture of him again so I can give my deep analysis on shoes that I'll never buy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! No, this is. I mean, I'll sure I'll cop them, but I mean, like, I don't know if my wife is gonna let me cop them. I mean, like, that's kind of oh, how this works out here, right? 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, like, would I look really fly and hip with it? Yeah, I'm sure I would, but I just don't think I don't know if it's gonna work. I the what's the price point on this? Am I reading this? Oh, hundred eighty. Oh man, yeah, that's a that's a deep price point for me, my friends. Uh, <laughs> that is that's something else. Uh, it's a sweet looking shoe. It looks great. It's gonna look great on a lot of high schoolers' feet um, that I hang out with. Right. And you're like, I would, I would like those shoes. Can you get Their your feet are going to look really cool, skin? and then they're going to go all slushy in the snow. <laughs> they're going to go home and wash them. That's true. Yeah. I'll cop yeah. them just well, in time for Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Just in time to mess right. up in the snow. Um, I actually, yeah, I love them. I, I think they're great. I would definitely cop them. Um, I actually prefer the alternate color better with the white okay. and the black. Um, but. I know the yellow and black is yes. classic Bruce Lee, so I understand why they did that. But um, dude, the I'm just I mean, seeing the alternate both. does way better. I agree, the alternate's yeah, way yeah. better. Those are those, are, yeah, those are amazing. Um, yeah, I really like the alternate. I, <laughs> I mean, I'm like looking at them now. I'm like, I really the alternate's like the alternate. where it's at. You're right. I, I like these. Um, I'm gonna agree. Like the alternate to me, the alternate is better only because I can actually wear it with something. I, mean, yeah. I, I love like, my car is yellow. I like yellow. Yellow is my daughter's favorite color. It's my mom's favorite color. I dig yellow. I don't own any yellow. So I got nothing that's going uh. to go with that. And I'm not about to go buy a Bruce Lee, you know, yellow with the black stripe jumpsuit to go with my non existing yellow, you know, motorcycle or whatever. Like I I've got nothing to you know, I've got nothing It's just in time for Christmas. You could get it. it at the top price it'll ever be at though. Yeah, you could pay like three hundred versus the typical two hundred you'd pay. It ain't, it ain't gonna happen. Um, if, I'm, right, if I'm gonna spend right, it, your choice. I, I will spend it on another pair of Elevens. Um, then, then the, I mean, I like these, and if I had the disposable income, I would probably cop them. Um, but I would probably cop the uh, alternates just because, again, I'm not about to start decking out in yellow. Um, it's just, <laughs> don't think it's gonna make me look good either. You know, all that yellow. <laughs> um, looking like a little, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, I got, got big feet, feet like so. Big Bird or something like that. I I ain't trying to have that. Um, that, yeah. but I think they're dope. And for people who can pull off yellow, if I had the yellow motorcycle and if I could rock the yellow like that, it would be a most definite because they look great. Yeah. Like there's no doubt about it. But yeah, the regular this ain't for the regular Joe. I may actually just get these. I might actually get them. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, I mean, I like either color, but uh. I have a feeling they're gonna be hard to get. Definitely, sneaker bots. Oh, God, I hate the bots. bots. Don't don't get me started on the but, bots. Uh, and Aaron, <laughs> in our community, we we you know we, we send our our our, our jig support. We hope you cop something because you've been taking a whole lot of L's thanks to those bots. Oh, he he's like been so taking many, so many L's and so trying to get these, these bots, trying to get man. these kicks out here. It's rough. It's rough out here in these streets. You know the the bots actually, the bots ran me out of the game for about a year. It's it's a cruel bot yeah. world. It is. <laughs> um, we're going to go into the last quick hit. See, I've told you I'm going to make these quick. Um, we're going back to the Star Wars world real quick here. Uh, so The Mandalorian, if you didn't hear us talking about earlier, returns season two this Friday, which you'll be listening to this uh, on Wednesday. So you'll have a day and a half, ultimately, to prepare for The Mandalorian season two, dropping Friday. And... An interesting theory has come up about character Moff Gideon, played by the wonderful John Carlo Esposito. Um, and that theory is that Moff Gideon may be a former Sith Inquisitor. Now, Max is probably going a little too deep on for you on Star Wars knowledge. Um, so I will let Unique DNA take first dibs before I explain a little bit to you on the Inquisitor history. I think it makes perfect sense. Because of the dark blade? Because of the dark saber, yep. The saber, the dark saber is um, sweet. The dark saber is sweet. Yes, it is. Yeah, that was like, yes. that was a pretty sweet part of that last season, he, of the he, season he finale. He cuts his way out and you're right. like, whoa, what? what is that? I was like, whoa, 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 hold on. I thought there was just lightsabers. <laughs> oh, I didn't know, I didn't know yeah, this was a thing. What I, yeah, the dark saber. I was like, it makes perfect sense. Um... Because, yeah, I was like, how else could he have gotten it, right? Um, there's not really a whole lot of other there's ways. There's not many. And, it. like, even if 
it's like how like how he would have gotten it if he wasn't one because it's not like they're just be right. floating out there hey here's this dark blade weapon you know used right. by this elite force just to kill jedi like how would you get your hands on that yeah i mean unless he's a former mandalorian um which is well, also, also possible. possible but not likely yeah, yeah um, that's not likely yeah i don't know that wasn't really their yeah. thing um, as far as like hunting down Jedi and, even, and stuff like that, and clearly and even when they leave their the child is a yeah, force. Even user. when they leave their clans, so. they tend to you know stay underground, like they're not out there. Type. He's got too much, too much personality, too much flair to be Mandalorian. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. He has a way too much authority. Oh, in, uh, the, in the remnant uh, of yeah, yeah, the yeah. Empire. These leftovers. Yeah, he's got too much stroke for uh, him to be. It, it makes sense to me. Like it, it, it's probably not yeah. right, but it definitely makes a lot of sense. It does make a lot of sense to me. I, I would, I would say, it makes it makes total sense. And then you know, just his whole, his his um his armor and everything. It has that inquisitor yeah. look, with the black and the you know they got the empire emblem. That's true. And yeah, I mean, and they all will do some kind of you know Sith mm-hmm. saber. Um, so yeah, it would make sense to me that he, yeah, that he somehow got the dark saber from killing off the last of the Mandalorian Jedi, the last one that, you know, owned it at the time or oh, who had it last? I have to remember. Yeah. 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 But Either way, I, I, I'm pretty sure he's, he's, he's an inquisitor. I think I don't know what that means. So but the Inquisitors, I'm very excited. So, I know, so, <laughs> so we short sure, Max. The Inquisitors were a um, were a hit squad um, that bet- between episodes three and four uh, of Star Wars. So between um, you know between uh, what's it? Written? What's three called? Because um, uh, I hate it. So Revenge, much. Revenge no, uh, of, yeah, Revenge of the Sith. Revenge of the Sith and a New Hope. Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. Um, there was a this hit hope. squad of. Uh, of Sith called the Inquisitors, and their job was to hunt down and kill the remaining Jedi. Um, so he's got the age definitely for right for being a former Inquisitor. Um, because which would actually, now that we're talking about this, I know you're going into the exposition, but that would also make sense why Ahsoka would be in the new episode. That's of a good point, yeah, the new season. I was going to mention that. That actually makes a it. ton of sense. Yeah. So it, I think even though it's it's a theory, it's nothing's confirmed, it makes a ton of sense. And I think it would be really, really cool because that would say to me that Disney is opening up their ideas uh, to using expanded universe stuff because that's all expanded universe, you know, lore story coming into the forefront. Yeah. yeah. That would be cool. I would love to see, um, which it, I mean, I probably won't do it, but who knows? Maybe I would love to see Thrawn in live action too. Yeah, a lot of people have said that. I don't know, and Max is probably like, "Who's Thrawn?" Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, now we're at the part where we're mocking me. All right, well, here we are. <laughs> every every show gets to this point at some point, and we've reached it at the two I'm at just, the two I'm hour just, mark is I'm where we reached. I'm just defending it. you, like you know, I I can't expect you to react to something where you probably is like, I've never heard of this person. What no, there's, okay. there's a guy with a blue face. Like, why it's is okay. there a blue face person here? Why are we talking about blue people? Isn't that Avatar? Blue people. Yeah. Blue? <laughs> um, blue. The blue, blue band, group. blue band group. Oh. Um. <laughs> Uh, Thrawn would be cool, but we don't. We don't want to. We, we'll save that rabbit hole for another time. Um, we're gonna hit. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna hit to our our main topic, which is a little fan casting fun to to end this episode. Uh, if you haven't heard, if you're a fan of the uh, Assassin's Creed video game series, Netflix is going to have a live action uh, Assassin's Creed series that is currently in development, as well as animated and, and anime versions to follow. But for the live version, let's fan cast who you would think would work in the Assassin's Creed universe. 
Give me, give me two or three uh, actors that you could see playing these uh, legendary assassins. Hmm. Yeah, ruminate on that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, think about it. I hadn't thought about so, this. So I've got um, two. Okay. I've got two. Go and right ahead. Guess one, one was like, one is an obvious one. So the obvious one for me is Jonathan Majors from Lovecraft Country. Um, okay. So he just got okay. casted as Kang, yes. the Conqueror. Um, which we talked about two epi- uh, three episodes ago with Viet Hun. Give a listen. To I that. am I am all in on this guy. I am all in on this guy. I think he's been doing a dynamite job in Lovecraft Country. Um, he's just kind of one of those new up and coming actors that I can already tell is just going to be doing a lot of stuff. So he would be great. Um, if the prerequisite for this show is that they have to be European, um, Caucasian descent, then I would lean towards Shia LaBeouf. And the really? reason I'd lean towards Shia LaBeouf is a couple reasons. Okay. One is we haven't seen him in a buff role yet. So we haven't seen him in an athletic mm. role. He's got the chops to work it. You mean Transformers I, wasn't uh, buff enough for you? Uh, that's a rabbit hole we don't want to go down tonight. Uh, uh, man. I digress. If only I had three weeks. Um, <laughs> you mean no, he I, wasn't buff in iRobot? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, he was an iRobot. <laughs> no, I'm just a big Shia LaBeouf oh, fan. Wait. Oh, you forgot, he was I forgot an iRobot, about that. Oh man, you totally kind of ruined my pick here. Not. But anyway, we'll try to we'll we'll try to defend <laughs> that, it. After that you that made wasn't a great, my intention. I'm sorry. Continue. It was a great Shia, counter Shia argument LaBeouf. to why he shouldn't be in this movie. I actually, actually, I actually do like Shia LaBeouf. I just think I I really um, liked him in Peanut Butter Falcon. Um, if you haven't seen that movie, that's like unbelievable movie that's probably his best acted movie in my opinion okay i think he could do it and i think it'd be kind of fun to if for like you know playing with the like he's in the future and he's getting strapped into the machine Mm -hmm. and he's not as buff i think that'd be kind of fun to play with them when he goes in he's like more buff kind of like i think uh, there's something fun to be playing steve rogers a little bit yeah but i mean if 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 there's no if it doesn't have to be european then my first guess is majors the first the first one i want is is majors because he just commands he he commands the screen he does um and in lovecraft country he is just he's leading that show right now oh yeah and he is going to be an unbelievable king i i I could not have picked a better king for the mcu but i i'm all in on jonathan majors right now i'm so excited about that actor i dig it i like that okay yeah i like that pick um I think I'm going to go with, and this might be unpopular. It probably will be. I'm scared now. I'll probably say Robbie Amell. Wait, who? Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Oh, that is unpopular. God. That is going to be unpopular. unpopular. <laughs> you know, I, mean, I, 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 hate, I hate how Arrow makes me not like him because I don't not like him. Um, he, But, God, yeah, I just... He's so typecast as as Arrow now that it's like, uh, and I don't want to be like that. I don't. He does fit the vibe for it. That's what he I'm. He does thinking. fit that vibe. It's not. It's more so it's like he just has that. Um, he has that vibe. <laughs> and then um, when you think about like like what also made me kind of think about it was um, I don't know if you've seen Upload mm-hmm. yet on um, on uh, yeah. Amazon Prime. Oh, I haven't seen. I haven't like, seen that. Kind yet. Of this, I saw the. It's kind of the same thing, right? Like he gets uploaded into this virtual world, and like he has to kind of, li- and like he did that so well. Like, see, I'm I need to like, watch oh, that man, because I, every I time I look at Robbie, I just think of his brother, and I think of him in, um, and I think, and I think of him <laughs> in Legends of Tomorrow, and I'm just like, and I'm not not Legends of Tomorrow. I think of him on in Flash as, um, uh, what's it, what's this called? What's the name? Him in Professor Stein. Um, Oh, um, Firestorm. Firestorm. Yes, I think of him as Firestorm. Firestorm. Like yeah. I, I can't think of him as anything else but, you know, but Firestorm. But I, sh- I, I do need to watch Upload because it looks hilarious. And Upload is Upload's fantastic. It does look. Really I love great. Upload. Great, great pick. Great callback. I forgot that I watched yeah. that a couple months ago. <laughs> well, it doesn't seem like that great if you forget. Twenty twenty has been it. that year that I've like forgotten everything that happened like months ago. Oh, because this is yeah. I, uh, I yeah, I'll way. give you a pass. Like, on. We talked about this earlier. I was like, it's been three weeks, right? Yeah, I'll oh, give you a pass weeks. on that. Okay. Um, <laughs> I got you there. That makes sense. But yeah, upload was upload was awesome. I like I definitely and like 
that was the first thing that came to my mind was like it's similar you know sort of premise in the in the sense that like he's in this virtual world and all that and i'm like so i know he can pull that off right because you've right? seen Cause it happen already already, yeah. seen him do it and we know he can kind of do the athletic thing and yeah I, I, I just think he'd be a great pick okay so so robbie mel any others that you can think of um, that's the first one that comes off the top of my head. I don't know. I guess if I think about it long enough, I'll okay. Come up with another one. <laughs> I'm gonna. Right I'm now, gonna. I hadn't. I really. This is the one topic I hadn't like thought about much beforehand. Um, uh, but now that I'm thinking about it now, now that I'm hearing your picks, I'm actually coming up with a pretty unique one. Um, that I kind of surprised myself with. Um, he's a little older, but um, uh, I think. What's his now? Now I forget his last name. Um, tag. Uh, what is his name? Now I'm mad at myself. Hold on, I'm gonna Google it. Um, <laughs> because Google it. Google never lets you down ever. For real, um, never. Just be prepared just, for all the ads yeah, you're gonna see about whatever show you're. I'm just gonna be right mad now. because I didn't remember <laughs> his last name. I'm generally like so good with names, and I don't want to look um, because I'm gonna be mad at myself for not remembering his. Ah, that's it. Jeffrey Donovan, a.k.a. Mm. Michael Weston. Yeah. From Burn Notes. Mm-hmm. Like, cause again, we've seen him. We've seen him as a spy. So, And he's got legit martial arts background. We know he can do the athletic stuff. We know he can do the fight scenes. Um, he's a little older, but he can still pass for someone in his early 40s. So he's not too old to be, you know, to be an assassin. And I think he has the presence. He's got the experience that he could do a role like that, at least be one of the assassins. Um, and I, I think he would be a good fit for that. I think he that would be a really good fit for him. Or if not too much acting is required, then it's perfect for Scott Atkins. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, okay, can you find, especially if it's got to be European. I mean, can you find a better European martial artist out there to put on television? Like, I mean, to put on a movie, like, I can't think of anybody else that would be better than Scott Atkins if it doesn't require a lot of acting. If you've got to yeah. act, then Atkins is not the right person. But if we're talking about 90% action, give me Scott Atkins. I mean, that's mostly what it, um, Assassin's Creed. Well, yeah, but, on a, anyway. but I mean, on a TV show, like, it's it's got to be more than that to keep going, you know? Yeah, but I think I think you can pull it off where he has minimal. Because I mean, the video games are basically just like all the other characters are kind of doing the acting, right? So like, if you can kind of keep that somehow, keep that in your script, um, and you're just kind of just the silent assassin that goes out and kills people, um, you can probably pull it off pretty easy. Yeah. I, mean, I agree. It'll just, be interesting to see like what this show looks like. I agree because I because it, it, if it's yeah. if it's a mess, then <laughs> then that's the second attempt at it, and we're done. Right? And like, it could like, easily be a mess. Yeah, because I was just thinking about that. Because like, didn't they do like a they did? Yeah, they did try this version. before. This is not the first. They tried attempt. a movie with Fastbender. Yes, and that was horrible. Yeah. And and, mm, and yeah, that's right. You I forgot mean, about oh, that movie. Man. That movie was so that one bad. Came out the vault. I had I, yeah, I put that was, one in the vault. It that was yeah. really to come bad. out. And, and so that was for me. Like I was like, man, Fassbender kind of was a good pick for that at the time. Well, he's got the look. He has the yeah. look, definitely. And part of the problem was they gave away all the good action scenes in the trailer. Like you didn't need to watch the movie. No, because all the good stuff was. They even did the whole yeah. suit. You know the whole. Um, you know, Jumping the, out the suicide dive or whatever. Like, they showed all the good stuff in the trailer. The suicide dive's got to happen like five times, right? In an Netflix, in the Netflix show, it's got to happen like five times an episode. <laughs> it's like every that's, that's the best like part of the game. Every, right? That's the best part of the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Swan dive right into a pile of hay, <laughs> conveniently set there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be hilarious, actually. Oh um, man. So like, good. I, I, I don't. I don't. I just don't know how you make that story be episodic and like you'd you know, have to really because like it was supposed to be right. Like with the first three, originally Ubisoft said this is we're, we're making right. a trilogy and this is the story, right? And like we're 
rebuilding these ancient memories to find the Knights Templars hidden treasure or whatever it was. Um, and it was like, it was yeah. a great story. Like, I know, I mean, I, that's what made me buy the game. I was like, just hearing the story, I was like, this sounds like an awesome game. Then I played it and I was like, this is super repetitive <laughs> and kind of boring. Um, <laughs> but, you know, if you can just, if you can encapsulate that story and take out all the game elements but of see, it. But that, see, that, that, that's the thing. Story. Like, so what, it's, it's a lot of rinse and repeat when you're playing it. But how can, so, but people are going to want to see really great action. And a lot of it's going to be, I mean, it's, it's, it's a political assassination game. And we mm-hmm. saw what happened when you put too much politics in Star Wars and everyone lost their minds and everyone's angry about it. So, I mean, are we going to get a show where there's a whole bunch of political talking that every once in a while someone gets stabbed? Because that's what it sounds like is going to happen. Well, I mean, this is not the greatest example, but I'm thinking about like uh, National Treasure. Oh, that's Treasure. definitely not a great example, right. but continue. <laughs> but I mean, the story that was there, like, you know what I mean? Like the, the Oh, so you, you're, you're talking that. about like, great story, poor execution. Can... Okay, I got yeah. you. Yeah, I mean... You can, like, that storyline, like, it kept you engaged for three movies, right? Even though it was, like, the for the most part, it was, like, ah, okay. Even if it, maybe you didn't I get didn't get out movies, the first movie. At least movie, for two. <laughs> that's just me. <laughs> right? Like, you were, like, oh, this is pretty cool. Like, the history. Like, if you dive deep into that stuff, right, and, like, telling the story and then the history and everything like that, and then the assassination parts are just more kind of the further right. the story somehow. Or change history or whatever. Um, I think you, you can make a great series out of it because there's so much history there, and then of course you know it's it's, it's historical fiction, so you make up your True. own stuff on top of that. And I mean, you can tell that in in a series, a season or two. Or it's it's Netflix whatever. though; they'll just they'll cancel it after one year. Yeah, that's yeah. what they do. It doesn't I mean, matter what they do. Netflix good... will cancel it after a year because it's Netflix. Like, wait, wait, people <laughs> right, like this? Right. Oh, wait, yeah. but it costs why would we, money. Why would we get invested in a show past one season if we're Netflix? Right. Yeah, yeah. That, that's my only That's, that's my only thing with this is if it's Netflix, it's not going to be around long enough for me to care. Yeah, that's the problem. It's like they, they got to yeah, they gotta tell the story and finish it. Right. In a well, instead of like – Maybe right, two. St- if it, it, it's, I mean, like, but honestly, it, it really perfect. shouldn't go past two or three. No, but you know how these things go. Um, usually, I mean, outside of yeah. Netflix. I mean, <laughs> unless they really expanded it, unless they expanded to like Australia, into Africa, into Asia, and you know, other places. If it stays Eurocentric, then. Well, I mean, that's what they were kind of trying to do with Black Flag, right? That's they true. Bring it to I forgot about that. Yeah, America. Um, that didn't go well. Like colonial America. So, um, I mean, well, a lot of people. That's, that's true. A lot of people do love it. It's like of, you loved it or hated it. Of the series. Yeah, not me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not me. <laughs> it wasn't my favorite either. I mean, honestly, I, I like. I, it's I, those first. Those first two games are the best. Favorite. They're the OG ones. Those are the ones yeah, I the like. Two. Those are the ones that I watched and played when I was in college and high school. Right. Yeah, the yeah, new the ones didn't here. feel the part. But um, yeah. See, I, but um, if I'm them, I, mean, I skip the whole lot. But those stories. See, if I'm there, them, I skip the whole live action part because you have a lot more leeway if you go animated and or an anime version, um, and maybe an animated version to keep it have a more PG option, and an anime version for your more hardcore. I want to see the blood and slash and sex and all that stuff. Um, I think you could just do more. Do maybe a two, a half an hour show, um, compared to a forty five minute drama, and do anime style, twenty five minutes, get more content, get more episodes, and not oversaturate the story. Mm. That's, I mean, granted, it's kind of limited as far as what you can do, and there's only so many, there's only so many major historical figures that you can assassinate or kill to change history or there's only so many you can really do well yeah i mean that's why i think they should have stuck to three games and, but i mean <laughs> who am I? we're just people um, we're just fans y'all <laughs> yeah we're just i agree guys talking on that's what we do bunch of nerds <laughs> they just keep stealing our um, ideas but you know 
I digress. Yeah. But yeah, I, I definitely think it could be successful if you kind of come at it from that angle and really tell the story. Like, you know, because you'll get all the history nerds, you get all the like the people who That's are true. into that stuff, um, historical fiction people. You'll get them just because they're like, oh man, you know, whatever it is, American Revolution, the Renaissance, whatever you want to, you know, whatever era you want to go into, um, you kind of get to tell that story. And from your own angle, and then the action is just kind of the icing of the yeah. cake. Like, oh yeah, and get to see some good action. Well, okay, too. so okay, I'm cool. gonna say if they do it with the writing level of a Man in the High Castle. So okay. that's a so good, that's a better example. So if, that yeah, I so think so of. if <laughs> each season is like, okay, what if um, they assassinated Mark Anthony instead of Caesar? And they say, yo, it's going to be better, so we're going to kill Mark Anthony and instead of Caesar. Caesar's going to live, or we kill Brutus instead of Caesar, something like that. Um, whatever. Kill Mark Anthony and make Caesar get mad, and he decides to establish power and blah, 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 blah. Like, And then next season, it's, um, uh, I don't know, um, assassinating King Henry to blah, 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 blah. And then the next season, it's something else. Like, if you do... One one major assassination that you have to do to change X, Y, and Z throughout that season, you do that three or four times, you could probably have a successful show if it's the writing on the par of a man in the high castle. And that's going to be a lot of political, um, intelligent, you know, historically fictional um, referenced content that if they don't take really good care of, of how they write it, it will then flop because it can't be as action based as probably most people will expect it to be. You're going to have to be really smart, very cerebral as far as when you kill, how you kill and how much action you do. And if people are going to go into it expecting to see a whole bunch of running on the walls and jumping back and forth and suicide diving, then it's just going to be, it's going to be like that trash movie. But if you do it like a man in the high castle where you're yeah, where every episode you're seeing, you know, of a let's say let's say it's a forty five minute drama and five minutes maximum of that forty five minute episode is actually action and the rest is setting up why they're taking said actions, then you probably have something to go with. That's a that but that means I just me. that means I just took I'd Scott Atkins it. out of my cast because he can't act his way out of a brown paper bag. No. Um, as much as I love the guys, I actually yeah. can't act. I ex- I accept your way. That's the way I want to go. <laughs> That's the way you want to go. That's yeah, the way I'll, I'll go. I endorse that. We've got a consensus, Jakes. We've got a consensus. We did it. Awesome. About time. Nice. We did it. it only so took us two, took hours, two hours, hours to come to a consensus. How about that? Well, Jeeks, thank you for enduring us going down the rabbit hole. And that's going to be it for this episode of the original Jeek podcast that we created to bless your earballs. Special thanks to our guest, Max Moser of the Infinity Bros podcast. Before we go again, Max, please remind them where they can follow you on the social medias. You can follow me at MaxMoser73. You can check out all our stuff on TheInfinityBros.com. Uh, it'll take you where you need to go from there. But it's easy, TheInfinityBros.com. Check us out. And uh, thanks again for having me on, guys. This has been a blast. You guys are a blast and a lot of fun. I want to go down many more rabbit holes with you, hopefully, in the future. Oh, we are looking forward to it because we're going to hold you to playing that oh, Knights yeah. of the Old Republic. <laughs> I know you will. Now I'm kind of nervous. i got to go like, get that game now, man. I'm gonna $5. Work, work if you haven't played the game, Cheeks, it's 5 <laughs> dollars in the app store trust me you will it's worth it is worth 10 times that much get the game play the game tell us how you like it tweet us mention it in the community whatever but i am your host rocky mr magic he is unique DNA. and we know jeeks that we could not do this journey this jeek thing we do without you so please continue to rate and review the show on your podcasting app of choice. We are on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, CastBox, man. It's more and more. And if you can't find us, email us, jignation at gmail.com, or message us on Twitter, IG now, as well as Facebook. And until next time, peace. Peace.
ready to make an entrance. So back with <laughs> Come on, clap for me. Oh, yeah. Whoa, slow down. Uh, 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 Whoa, speed up. This is DJ What, and you're listening to the original Jeek Podcast.